Ah, oh, we have Graham. Hello. Earth, Earth well, calling Graham. Well, hey. you haven't, you haven't you Graham. <laughs> Mr. McGregor, how are you? I thought, is, is this not the adventure show? <laughs> It'll do, whatever, no worries. How How's life? Oh, brilliant. Oh, oh brilliant. Fuck. Racist. Does it, does it sound better, Bruce? Um, yeah, it does, actually. It does sound a little bit better. Yeah, definitely. It's Just up to you, mate. Bit. You... It depends. It depends. We're going with either the ridiculously massive headphones or the little things. But... It, the, aud- the audio definitely sounds better with the big headphones, oh, but I it's not... <laughs> I can't <laughs> <laughs> this, this is utter chaos. This is what I'm going to have to work with, people. <laughs> I'm recording at the moment. <laughs> um, it's up to you, Tom. Well, whatever you want. If with the ear pods, oh. it just sounds a bit tinny, <laughs> and I'll, um, I'll, I'll tweak it. I'll it tweak keeps, it. I'll it make you sound. Put, it, it keeps putting it back to this automatically. <laughs> so it's. I don't know. Just how use to them. <laughs> just use them, and I'll make you sound like Barry White. I'll put loads of bass on it. Don't worry. Shall I just talk in my deep voice? <laughs> Oh, there you are, Graham. Hello. <laughs> oh, what happened to Mr. McGregor? Oh, it's Excellent. Back. It's quite easy, really. Wow, this, this this went from A list to D list pretty quick, didn't it? <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> this this is what you've got to expect, people. This. <laughs> um, guys, are, are you all right? Just to crack in straight away. I mean, I've I've been recording right from the start, but obviously, I can oh, I can oh, start. Yeah. The, yeah, but I can. We got, I can we got start all the headphone po- mess. Great. <laughs> yeah, we we did, but I mean, I can cut all that out. Obviously, it's up to you. Whatever you're comfortable with, people seeing, uh, just let me know. Good. Christine's got all proper lighting and everything. I know she has. She's proper glammed it up, makeup yeah. and everything. You're putting us to shame. It's only because, uh, like, I look like an absolute camp here if I don't. I just look absolutely. <laughs> it's it's too late for me this time of night. <laughs> <laughs> Rubbish. We've seen all your WhatsApp messages over the last month. <laughs> you're, all, you're normally in about your eighth beer by now. I turn into a pumpkin in about an hour, so let's get cracking, all right? <laughs> right then, let's crack on. Folks, this is the crew behind Motorbike TV. Is it Motorbike TV or Motorbike TV show? What's our name? You, you, you should know this. You are one of the presenters. <laughs> yeah, I know, so you know. Sure. But it, it is... Uh, the TV show is Motorbike TV, um, but just to confuse, um, to avoid confusion, we're on social media and Instagram and things. We're Motorbike TV show, but the website mm-hmm. is motorbike t- uh, motorbike dash tv dot com. There you go. That's there the, you go. The short right. answer, which is very long. <laughs> awesome. Now the next very important question is this: Is everybody armed and ready? Excellent, excellent. Mine's my, my sort of camouflage, but there, there is there is <laughs> vodka and diet coke in there. It's I knew you wouldn't let me down. Yeah. Mix of good and Fantastic. bad. Fantastic. Am I your excellent first work. guest that doesn't drink? Uh, no, no, you're not actually. No, no, you can sit in the corner, Tom, and just you know <laughs> whimper away, be, cringe <laughs> Greg, at what comes the, out in the, the next hour or two. Gets to sit here sober while all his presenters get drunk. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Let's start as we mean to go on. <laughs> right, slangs, people. Here's yes. to um, yes. here's to the future. Cheers. Bear hmm. in mind, it is the first time we have all met. Even <laughs> kind of. <laughs> it, so you weren't it, there for the big meeting we had on Zoom. <laughs> oh yeah, that was during Christmas. I think everyone was a bit pissed. I can't we, we've had. That. We've had. We've had one Zoom call so far, people. Christmas where, Zoom, uh, I'm sorry. Which was which was during <laughs> Christmas, and people were a little bit lubricated. So uh, yeah, that might be why. I, I won't even remember today, tomorrow. So yes, <laughs> I'm the same, but it's nothing to do with the booze. This is quite nice. This Camden beer. I got sent. I got sent this. One of my friends sent me this in the post. Thank you very much, John. Appreciate it. Mm. What is it, Bruce? I can't see. My poor eyesight. Camden Beer 2020. Oh, what kind of flavour is it? What kind of, what depth is it? What, what notes are you hitting? Uh, oh, jeez. Um, hang on. I might have to have another little sip. <laughs> it's, um, oh, it's quite like caramelly or something. 
I don't. Let me read what the description says, and I'll tell you. That's cheating. You can't. You can't pretend you know about beers by just reading off other descriptions. I, I know. It says something about offbeat jazz music, Imperial Pilsner. <laughs> I don't know. It's nice. It's all right. It's I've, good. I've never had anything that feels like offbeat jazz music. <laughs> You've not lived. Oh, he's on the You've beat. You've not lived. <laughs> Obviously. Yeah, yeah, exactly. He likes ones on the beat. Um, right. So with a view to format, I think it'll just be the normal one. We've got loads of questions to go through and um, I'm sure we will just let things go as it as it develops. How's that? Or has anyone got anything major that they want to chat about and get out the way straight away? No. no. <laughs> I, Phil, I'm just sitting Phil here wincing, hoping this will just not go pear shaped. To be honest, <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be an absolute train wreck now. It really is. What I, is, I, I, what is the like, worst that can happen? Oh dear! I fall off my chair. <laughs> What's the worst right. that can happen, Tom? What's the worst that can happen when you're working with presenters that know you too well and love winding you up? What's the worst that can happen? Um, How upset can you get? Oh, I can get very upset. <laughs> it's never good being a, a, a producer and having to sit there and, you know, be completely helpless as your presenters say things and you can't you can't cut and make them start again. <laughs> Um, but, but surely... So by all means, we can take the mick out of um, when Graham first started presenting, and it took him. Hmm, let's see, what was it? Seventy plus... takes to say welcome to the show. Oh, it's gone Good from effort. twenty-eight to thirty-five to fifty to seventy. <laughs> I know, but it annoys you, so it grows. <laughs> Eventually, it'll be like we were there for four days. <laughs> 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 well, th th this is my first gig, so uh, the last time I worked with you on anything, Tom, you made me cry. So we'll we'll see how things go. That's it's, it's, it's that kind of taskmaster that I am. <laughs> <laughs> Something's beeping well, in the background. What was that about after, or are we going to discuss that at uh, another closed time? What what was the crying? I've heard this so many times, and I'm still unaware of the story. Is it I'm one just, to I, now? Or? I'm it just was... a scary character. It was the casting couch that you have to go through. Did you not do that with you? You told me it was normal. <laughs> no. It's, no. Yeah, it's totally normal. It's, it's, it's for the real Graham's talent. Graham's like, yes, yes, talent. you did, yes. <laughs> I fast-tracked that bit. <laughs> it was um, Tom filmed my, my DVD about, the, oh, hang on, how how what time are we at? Ten minutes, ten minutes, and I'm going to mention it, people. Tom filmed the DVD about my Around the World trip and um, Wait, made me cry. Crazy. Did you yeah. go around the world? Yes, yes, I did. Really? You never did. mentioned it. I know, I don't like to talk about it, but, you know, I will if you want. No problem. <laughs> um, I suddenly thought uh, we, we should introduce everybody to people, I suppose. Probably, yeah. It's probably a good idea. Right, so this is your team for the new TV, Amazon TV show. Tom is the producer, director, writes the theme tune, sings the theme tune, hums the theme tune. Uh, then we have Graham, who you might know from Adventure Bike TV. And we've also got Christy. And then there's me. Uh, and that's it. We are going to be your sort of cast and crew for the TV show, which comes out in, is it August uh, still? The plan is August. Plan uh, is August. Year. Yeah. Right. Cool. Um, and that's on Amazon Prime. On Amazon Prime. Um, and it'll also be available on our production partners website which is done up cool. uh, so yeah they've they've come on board as production partners i'm just going to get the dig in straight away you know <laughs> straight away i'd like to thank our production partners done up um they to be fair they, they've come in uh, at a time when actually it's really difficult to get support for anything like this at the moment no one you know no one's really kind of confident in the market and things like that and for them to um put their faith in both uh, Adventure Bike TV, which is the other show we do, and the brand new Motorbike TV uh, mm. has actually just been uh, fantastic that they're coming on uh, as production partners for that. Um, but yeah, we, it will be on Amazon Prime. Uh, that is our main output, which will go out in um, UK and the USA. It'll also go out in Germany, but it takes a bit longer to come out in Germany because of all the translations that have to go through for the um, right. subtitles. That just takes a, a few weeks longer. Uh, but uh, it'll also be available anywhere else in the world um, and for anyone that doesn't have Amazon to watch on the Dunlop website. 
Bosh, happy day. I didn't oh, realise yeah. that. All right. <laughs> Excellent. So anyone can watch it anywhere in the world. Brilliant. Happy days. So we're looking forward to that. Cannot wait. Well, I can't wait to see it on the TV. Never mind start actually filming it. It'll be cool, that. Right. Um, I think first off then, if we crack on with questions and then just deal with what, what comes our way, because it'll no doubt it'll no doubt trigger various lines of chat. Yep. That sound all right? Yeah. Yep. Happy days. Right. First off, we'll go we'll go to Patreon as always, patreon.com forward slash teapot one. So first one we've got is from Bronson. <laughs> Hi guys, do you think Bruce is doing the old trim teapot thing just so he matches the old press photo? Thanks very much, Bronson. Thank you. <laughs> and what and what have you all been doing to get yourselves TV ready for the best oh, oh sorry. What have you been doing to get yourselves TV ready and all the best for a great project? So, what have you been doing for the TV? Nothing, uh, I'm behind the camera. Uh, <laughs> Apparently, we had a production meeting at Christmas, which I completely forgot about. <laughs> Sorry. Drinking <laughs> copious amounts. Well, you're, oh, you're I, I, I can't uh, wait for the sponsors to watch this and find yeah, out that we're really unprepared. Thanks, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. Did you want us to put on a work face for this? Sorry. <laughs> no. I, I knew that wasn't going to work anyway. <laughs> Graham, you're quite a fit and active bloke anyway, aren't you? You're always out on that push bike thing you've got, maniac. Um, I would say I'm active. I'm, I'm not sure about fit, but yeah, that's just about keeping myself occupied generally it's not about necessarily preparing for the show i mean we can't we can't joke about it but it, it there, there is a lot of preparation that goes on in the background yeah uh, and, and tom is doing yeah, he's doing 99.9 percent .9 of that he's he's kind of the engine in the background making things happen um and I, I'm, I'm i'm yeah i'm now i'm i try to keep fit generally that's not so much for the show but um i just i just want to get out and start doing some filming and we haven't done haven't been able to do any kind of proper filming for over a year now tom over a year wow yeah i think the last time we filmed was uh when we did the links for last series of uh adventure bike tv which was november um, 2019 2019 so yeah. it's been just God. over a year now so yeah and bear in mind prior to that we were filming pretty much every month for seven years yeah so, <laughs> so it's, it's been it's been a drastic change have you guys not been filming Adventure Bike TV then? Because I, I thought not, you were filming all that at the moment. No, we we had we we are we we just started on the next series of Adventure mm. Bike TV. Um, basically, while we're during during kind of lockdown, when we went to lockdown, we kind of had started kind of prepping the next series, uh, which would have gone out um, uh, around Christmas time, just gone twenty uh, twenty. Um, but no, we had all sorts of, you know, obviously we, we it's very hard to get bikes during this time. Mm. Um, you know, we, we, we did have to look for a change of uh, production partner, uh, cause you know, so many people are struggling in, in kind of the current climate. Um, so uh, it, it did, it was a huge change for us actually, um, we, I don't know how interesting this is for people outside of them. <laughs> but, uh, and the, su the sum up is essentially we, we got to the point where we just had to go, you know, right, you know, we, we've got this break that we can't do anything about, you know, what, what do we do? Do we, do we just try and cobble something together or do we just stop, give it a break, take a step back and look at it. And that's what we mm. did. Took a step back. Uh, me and Graham had hours and hours and hours worth of conversations over the you know first few months of 2020 when everything went into lockdown what will we do um, there were fun times yeah and that's where we kind of decided you know let's actually take a step back and go from uh really try and push something um through that that was kind of bigger than just you know uh what we've done in the past which is obviously now we've got the new adventure bike we've got adventure bike tv and we've got the brand new motorbike tv so mm. two tv series to cover kind of the whole market as much as we can um yeah so it's a it's it's been a long time i think it's also worth saying though it, it gave us an opportunity to look back at some of the other things that we've done in uh, over the last few years and add them to the specials on adventure bike tv so uh, yeah, mm. we've, we've added yeah. content to the to the channel on on Amazon, without 
actually filming it because right. Tom Got never you. takes stuff we've done in the past. It's been that we own, but we've shown it elsewhere in the past, and that that's now gone on the channel. Yeah, yeah I mean, yeah, we've yeah. got South Africa, Pyrenees. We've got the um, British, British bike off. Um, what else have we got? Belgium on there. Mm. So you know, a collection of kind of specials we put together on Amazon as well, so people watch those. Oh, yeah. So we haven't been just sitting there doing nothing. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Christy? Um, you know, I've been, uh, I've been, I've, I've been enjoying a relaxing lockdown. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, but also I do have, on a serious note, uh, in preparation for this, uh, fitness wise, going back to the, uh, question, uh, <laughs> obviously I, uh, I work out every day, um, you know, do a lot of, uh, uh, high intensity training and uh you know getting fit to uh yeah i've got two kids i've got two kids and i've um i've i run around after them quite a bit sounds and like I, you're busy enough honestly you know i've enjoyed not having to do the school run so yeah. you know, i yeah I drunk a lot how is the home <laughs> how is the homeschooling going I love I love your WhatsApp daily WhatsApp updates about the the current state of homeschooling. In Christie's I am house. the worst worst teacher <laughs> in the world. I, I do you know what? Like um, sometimes being a parent, you do uh, you are too hard on yourself anyway. Um, uh, but I generally I can't even sit back and and say like you know oh I, I should really give myself credit to being you know a mum and a teacher I am the worst person to teach my own children because they're just as stubborn and frustrating as I am and I they don't listen they just do not listen so it's it's yeah I've I've, I've found I like my mates they all have school age kids i mean my son's 23 now so uh he's well past that but my mates that have all got school age kids they're all like you know i have got a newfound appreciation and respect for the teachers when you <laughs> <laughs> and you're like oh, ah yes. right yeah yeah it's not a well, job you can be very fancy. clever like me and marry a teacher oh happy yeah. days ah, that's thinking that's ahead that tom <laughs> Where I went wrong in life. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's been, it has been tough because, um, you know, we got, I, I, there's a lot of commitments that we have now, uh, you know, that I've been wanting to, there's a lot of stuff that I have to do, uh, but also because uh, my children have been home with me, they have become priority and mm. I have got to, you know, um, be a best teacher as I possibly can. And it, it has been tough and that's what's turned me to drink. drink. In 2020 <laughs> and 2020. <laughs> uh, I, I now understand why. We used to like take the mick out of the teachers in school that stunk of vodka, but now I understand <laughs> why. I do. <laughs> Child services knocking at the door as we speak. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, right, next. I, tell, I tell you, Christy, you've, you've got a whole kind of thing to look forward to. So a, a bit like Bruce, my kids are now uh, my 24, 22 <clears> and, and 19. And for various different reasons, they're all still at home. Um, although one's meant to be at university, but that ain't happening either. Mm -hmm. um, and and, and they, they just join in with the, with the drinking thing. You know, this is the thing, yeah. When I when I sort of started thinking about having a family, I really didn't think through like baby and toddler stage. I just assumed it'd be like teenagers. Yeah, let's just, just yeah, let's go out. Yeah. I love I the fact that you think that when was... your kids are teenagers, they're going to want to drink with you. Yeah. They will. I am fun. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot that I got like you know 18 years uh, prior to the fun stuff really yeah. so yeah I'm, I'm yeah no it's um on a serious note preparation wise we've just been doing homeschooling and getting that out of the way but uh you know for myself I've been keeping fit I've been inspired by you Bruce I'm going to be doing the challenges and all that so good work good work <laughs> it's killing me I'm absolutely knackered but Oh well, never mind. It's got to be done, isn't it? It's got to you, be done. You can see though the actual aesthetically, you can see the change in you already. You can. Bugger off! <laughs> it's very kind of you. Very kind. <laughs> right, next question. Let's move on. David Hemmings to 
all of you, what three items, and this can be anything, what three items in your life uh, do you have that you cannot be without and why? Ooh. 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 Can anyone think of anything straight off or are we just going to pick on somebody? Pick on Chris. Pick on Graham. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, pick on Graham. Go on, Graham. (laughs) Go on, Graham. Three items that you can't live without and why? <laughs> Go on, what's just popped into your head? Tell me. If I say my, if I say my right hand, <laughs> is that for because writing? That, because writing, because obviously. Without it, I can't write. Hmm. Accelerator hand. <laughs> An accelerator so... hand, exactly. An accelerator hand. I'm gonna have fun editing that. <laughs> <laughs> Look at, look at Tom. Tom can just see those sponsors disappearing over the horizon. <laughs> Literally, we confirmed a, a clothing sponsor today. Feridax are coming on board. And I know they're like, oh, we really want to let you know before Friday so you can talk about it on the show. And now I think they're just going to be like going, no, no. <laughs> well, you, you must have known this was not going to be a sign of times. I mean, of course, yes. I, I can't think of any other way that could be interpreted. <clears throat> no, no, me either. Yeah, especially when Christy's in the background doing that. So, you know. I'm, I'm <laughs> All right. I'm uh-huh. Of course you are. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, dear God. Go on then. Christy, an item that you can't... Oh, my God, I can't believe I've just asked that now. An item that you cannot live without and why? Um... Okay, so uh, it's not very exciting, and it is uh, rather vain, but eyeliner is one. <laughs> you know, I just, I can't, I can't, I can't. Ironically, I can't talk without my eyeliner, but, you know, it's a confidence thing, darling. Right so uh, eyeliner is, is, is key. But those are three things. Three, yeah, if you can think of three. <clears throat> eyeliner. Um, I think I could live without most other stuff, actually. Cause, like, I was going to say, like, like mobile phone and everything, but you know, when yeah. it comes down to it, I could live without that. I really could. That would so, be okay. whoa, 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 whoa. Wait a sec. So, a mobile <laughs> phone, which is your single, might be your single connection to your family and your kids. You can do oh, without no. that. Yeah, forget that. Yeah, You've got eyeliner. Family, yes. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> um, okay. Eyeliner, mobile phone. This is tricky because you, you know, I am. I'm not like a materialistic person, so actually, I could strip it back and say I could live without most stuff. You're putting food. way too much thought into it. Yeah. Way too food. much thought into it. There we are. Eyeliner, food, food and my mobile. I think we've all established that Christy is going to be actually, contrary to what possibly we initially thought, Christy is going to be the grown up here and the one that thinks things through logically. <laughs> sandwiches, I get to feed you all, I'll make you all oh, your sandwiches. You're talking. You know, I'll fill that sound tight, don't worry. <laughs> Tom, what about you, mate? Um camera. I I, I sound very kind of oh, because I'm you know, I but no one knows who I am if I don't have a camera in my hand. <laughs> we go, we go to. Oh, that's not true. We go to motorbike shows, and I can walk around without any problems without a camera. As soon as I put a camera in my hand, everyone's like, "Oh, you, you're, are you that guy that does adventure bike TV?" And you know, I can walk. You know, I walk with Graham and things like that, and they'll talk to Graham and ignore me, and then they'll see my camera, and then suddenly I become visible. <laughs> So it's, you know, but I think um, I think a camera is quite a special thing in many ways. Uh, a lot of people just see it as something that you can um, you can kind of record what's going on around you, which of course you can. But it also gives you a great tool to interact with people. When we've done series out in Africa and things like that, some of the most amazing shots we've got are of kids. And what you do is, you know, um, I always try whenever I get any sort of camera that's digital SLR, uh, with its proper big camera, something that I can turn a screen round. So mm-hmm. I can show the kids, for example, when we're in Africa, 
we stopped while we were having a bike repaired at the side of the road in Africa and all these kids were over there and no one kind of knew what was going on and they they weren't kind of uh, really engaging with us and then all you do is you flip the screen up so that they can suddenly see themselves on the camera and you get all these amazing shots of these kids going like this yeah. like this it, 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 it's I think it's a bigger tool in that respect. Also, you know, as I said, it's um, it's kind of I, I, going somewhere without a camera is quite alien for me. Yeah. But we need to take you on a trip without a camera. I don't. Know, I do. I, I think I'd be really boring. I I, <laughs> I did it recently. <laughs> I I did it recently. I went on a to Wales, funnily enough, with with my mates, and I and I just thought, do you know, I'm not taking any cameras. I'm just going to be away with the boys and have some fun. I was, I was just a bit, I wasn't bored, but I just felt a bit lost. It's like, uh, I was even talking to myself yeah, in my lid, like I was vlogging. And you're like, oh, you you need to get a grip of yourself here. <laughs> and now I wish I had filmed it, but oh well, never mind. I, I, find, it, I find it really hard to go away on a trip with my friends my, because they, they know I film stuff. And I do it just for yeah. fun. If I do, yeah. it, I don't know, if, you know for... 15 years with my with my buddies I will film it um and it feels really weird if I go away a bit Bruce exactly like you said I did it once a couple of years ago I didn't I said I'm not going to film the trip <clears throat> and something was really missing it yeah. was really missing and everyone said afterwards hmm there's a film you know we want to yeah. we want to see the memories and yeah narration and uh, so I bet you got I, places quicker though didn't you it feels weird <laughs> it's like you I get places I, quicker yeah, yeah. Yeah, but do, do you find though, Graham, that when you're away with your mates, <clears throat> the second you turn a camera on them, they can be the most outgoing, gregarious character ever. You turn a camera on, and like all my lot shut up. They're like, you know, they're, they're they're great fun to be around. But as soon as I put the camera on them, they all just clam up and they're like, no, nah, not. No, Graham just not doesn't playing. have that issue. Graham does no. the complete opposite. Turn the camera <laughs> and suddenly he's like, hi, <laughs> I'm Graham. <laughs> No, I mean, to, my you might know me from such TV shows as Motorbike <laughs> TV and The Great Arctic Bike Off. Uh, did you know I did a TV series with Danny John Jules down in Africa? I think you'll find I did. <laughs> Thomas Woodrow, I think you'll find I resemble that comment. <laughs> you resemble that comment or resent that comment? Has the alcohol got to you already? <laughs> All right, we've got think, another question. Actually, oh, sorry, sorry. Sorry. To answer your question, Bruce. Actually, they, my, my buddies that I ride with every year, and, and that they're sort of used to it now. So the biggest, uh, so they're used to it. If I turn the camera on them, generally they're kind of used to it. The biggest challenge for me now is to get them to film stuff. All because right. otherwise, yeah, it's it's some it, it's me talking to the cameras and walking back from the shower in the morning, and then it's rest of it is them and my mm. helmet camera. But now they've all got helmet cameras and they've all got used to greater or lesser degrees doing a bit of diary footage. Yeah, and I think just talk shit to the to the to your phone in the morning, and they're actually yeah. they're all starting to do it. So our films are starting to get better and better and better because they're starting to really get the spirit of doing it, and they they also recognise it makes it more fun. And when they yeah. when they see the the half hour film that I kind of throw together afterwards in my very amateurish way, and they show it to their their mates or their wives or girlfriends or whatever. But they they go actually that was real that was that was quite a lot of fun I, I can see yeah. you you guys have fun I, I didn't sit there going that was boring I'm quite engaged with that yeah that's so, a great idea actually yeah it's a really good idea I might try that on one of me if we ever get to to do a trip again I might I might try that It'd be a good idea yeah right next question the Bingley Wheeler Dave hi Bruce Graham and Christy and Tom. Really looking forward to the new show. Will it have a particular motorcycle theme, for example, an, an emphasis on touring and general recreational riding, or on new bikes and products? Or will it include the full spectrum of bikes and biking? Cheers and wishing you the very best of success with the new endeavour, Dave. Yes, Tom. I should probably take that one. Mm, that's a Tom question. <laughs> um, it is a Tom question. Grown up Tom's question. <laughs> it's uh, essentially we are making... Um, the easiest way to say it, although we don't like to compare it because things are very different, uh, we're essentially looking to make the top gear of motorbikes. You know, we want um, people to engage with it. So it will take into account all the whole realm of motorcycles, uh, touring bikes, sports bikes. There will probably be a little less adventure because we have a bench bike TV, which is mm -hmm. the whole show is dedicated to a bench bike TV. So um, there will be 
there there might be a few bits of adventure bike in there but most of that will kind of be on adventure bike tv the rest but the rest of it you know we'll be doing everything from electric bikes touring bikes sports bikes um we've got some great cafe races in there but it's not just um a show where we review bikes you know that that it's um it's a more rounded show than that we have uh lots of inter- i mean the idea is it's it's, it's almost primarily an entertainment show we want people to watch the show um and it it'd be something that anyone can sit down and watch you know my my wife for example has no interest in cars at all but will quite happily watch top gear and the grand tour because they are entertaining anyway um so we will be having um you know bike reviews on there but we will be looking um at real kind of headline headline bikes the the bikes you can't necessarily you know nip down to your local uh, dealership and ride uh, we, you know not not the kind of bikes where you can do a youtube search and find 5000 different reviews of a bike you know it's it's real kind of the specialist stuff we'll be doing some great kind of fun challenges with the presenters we have um oh, a, a segment that we that's going to be called the motorcycle olympics um uh, which is hence my training i don't i don't want to i don't want to spoil too much we're bringing the uh the other two presenters from adventure bike tv across uh to do some crazy uh stuff with some bikes that they've bought um there's some yeah build challenges some kind of look into kind of uh, more kind of documentary style features where we look at the history of things uh christy's going to be going over to uh the isle of man uh to do a feature about the tt because obviously it's not running uh this year so there'll be uh, features around those kind of things but i, I don't want to give too much away I'm, i keep looking up here because up here are all my my war room boards <laughs> which has all the different features on <laughs> which bikes we've got for the features and who's going to be presenting what where the locations are and they're all on a big board up here so <laughs> that's why i keep looking up here um but yeah it's 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 quite around uh yeah the answer is it's, it's a much more rounded show it's not just you know chucking a load of bike reviews at you um yeah, yeah. there you go <laughs> cool well hope i answered I your question i I know, I'm I'm the same. I really can't wait to get to get sort of cracking on with it really and, and get stuck in. It's gonna be fun. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Okay. Next one, Rob Bignall, to all of you. Brown or red sauce on a sausage sandwich? Barbecue Come on, there's sauce. no debate. Barbecue sauce. Be brown. Barbecue sauce. What? That's no. Be no. <laughs> It's going to be brown sauce, isn't it? <laughs> this this is going to break up the band before we've even got to top of the pops, isn't it? I was going to say very specifically, it's brown sauce on a sausage sandwich, and it's yeah. red sauce on a bacon sandwich. Yes, End Christy, off. Christy, I thought I thought I thought we had a thing. I'm the total opposite. Oh, what? Yeah. You no know, Bra- brown really sauce on bacon. We're over. <laughs> I said, Tom, this can't happen. This just isn't going to work. Well, ladies sorry, and gentlemen, I'd like to announce the end of uh, Motorbike TV. <laughs> <laughs> what was that, Graham? Sorry, mate. What? No, I, I, I'm sorry to gang up on you, but I'm 100% with Christy. It's brown sauce on sausage and, and red on bacon, definitely. No. I, 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 have, I have to be honest, if I can't have barbecue sauce, I'd do it Christie's way as well. You're, you're kind of the odd one out here, Bruce. <laughs> I, do, I do like to be an individual, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> so says the man saying... says the man on a GS with a rocket kit. <laughs> so Bruce, you're saying red sauce on a sausage sandwich. Yeah, I think so, I would. I, I <laughs> would say it. Red sauce on a sausage sandwich. That's the one, yeah. I I I'd go brown sauce on a bacon, definitely. But I think I'd probably go red sauce on a sausage. Why? Just why not? Because because you do the you do the opposite, so then I'm going to do it that way. <laughs> I used to think you were a man of integrity, but you know now I'm I'm not too sure. Really, um, I am incredibly stubborn. So if you tell me that's the wrong thing to do, I'm bloody well doing it. Ah, fair play, fair play. <laughs> oh, oh no, I've just seen who the next question's from. If you want, if you ever listen to the podcast, you'll know this name, Pete English. I know that name. Yep, 
here we go. I haven't read these, so let's see what this is going to be all about. Hi guys, hope you're all fit and well. Really looking forward to the new programme. If you were given the chance to have your programme aired on ITV and you could choose the adverts, who would you ask and what would you choose? Mm. Ooh. That's a good Ooh. question. It is, isn't it? His Pete's questions are brilliant. They, they, they get the old uh, brain matter working. Right. Mm. Mm. Wow. I don't know. I mean, it would be it'd be really easy to say things like, "Oh, well, of course, we'd want Dunlop and we'd want Feradax because they're sponsoring the show." But Tom's a company man. Company in, in, man. No, Tom. but in terms of, in terms of uh, genuinely, you know, I I like a good Guinness ad, but I mean, they are just uh, I mean, just in just in terms of something that's just cinematically beautiful is yeah. a Guinness ad, but. Do you remember the horses running yeah, with the, the waves? Yeah, the coming out of the oh, wave. Oh, stunning, gorgeous. wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. Was yeah. that Guinness or Lloyd's Bank? No, no they're, they're, Guinness. They're, that was Guinness. Guinness. Because they're, they're white horses coming out of the wave. The, the, you're thinking of black horses for Lloyd's Bank. They run Who was the, the Widget one then? Who was the Widget one? Wasn't that Guinness? No, that was oh. Boddington's or something, wasn't it? it was yeah, Widget. Boddies or Worth- Worthington's or something, wasn't it? The Widget, widget mm. in the can. Yeah. Is it a Guinness one? I don't know. I can't remember. I don't know. I just I remember I remember the Guinness when the, when Guinness started doing those ads because there was the Rugby World Cup. I think the year after they did that advert and they adapted the advert to have rugby boys instead of the horses. It was rugby yeah. boys coming out the waves. Coming out of it, yeah. 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 Also, you've got to love a good uh, Marks and Spencer's food advert, haven't you? Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> Marks and Spencer's chocolate cake. <laughs> it isn't just. Any Marks and Spencer's food, is it? <laughs> this isn't any chocolate cake. This is Marks and Spencer's chocolate cake. Marks and Spencer's uh... chocolate cake, yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm just thinking how much fun I'm going to have doing the trailer for this. It's going to be brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> Which is, yeah, what, what was the Aussie advert for a beer when they said, oh, I can see the pub from here? Oh. That'd be the one. Oh, what a, sherry for, a sherry for the missus? That one. <laughs> Forex? Is that Forex? Was it Forex? I wouldn't give I... a Forex for a. Uh... I don't, I don't gonna, know. You're, you're, you're a bit older than me, to be fair, right? Yeah. Is that Foster's then, Forex? I thought maybe it's Foster's. I don't know. Do you, yeah, do you remember? Foster. Why is that beeping? Can anyone hear a beeping? I can okay, I keep it's, hearing it's, like a. It's, it's, I know exactly what it is. It's Christy filming on her phone and she's getting text messages and it's vibrating. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Is that what it is, right? Yep. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. How'd you mute it? Well, you can't without. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. You put on Do Not I'm Disturb. I'm so sorry. You put I, Do I'm Not Disturb on it. I get in, you know. <laughs> All your friends. Um, I like. Friends. It's her husband going, Can you get home? These kids are driving me mad. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's him going, You're too drunk. Cut it me. <laughs> Do you remember the skull advert? Graham, you'll remember the Skull advert. Well, the, the Vikings. Yeah, yeah. Skull, 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 skull. I like, I like that one. Yeah. Um, uh, right. What? You've got, what the look, adver- you've got the look for it as well. I'm working on it. I'm working yeah. on it. Between this and Rowan, I'm going to go invading soon. That'll be me. Job done. <laughs> uh, right. Advert for the TV. Ooh. Who would you ask, and what would you choose? Blame me. Jeez, Pete, you don't have to pick your questions. Are we just going to go with a beer theme? Is that is that what it's going to be? Booze. A John Lewis Christmas advert, it never fails. Well, yeah, good point. The, the, oh, debatable, you see that one? Been some years. Do you but... see that one this Christmas with the old man who had to lift his kid up, to, uh, his granddaughter up to put the, the uh, star on the Christmas tree? Did you see that? No. Oh. Crying like a I baby. Didn't, I didn't like it. <laughs> what? I know. It's like the most heartwarming thing ever. No wonder you didn't like it. Didn't like it. <laughs> <laughs> My favourite one was the beer and the hair. Best Who one did ever. That? Who Remember did that the beer one? and the John Lewis Christmas advert? It was the beer John and the Lewis. hair, and it was the one where they used the Lily Allen um, Summer Only We Go uh, theme tune. And the hair gave the beer an alarm clock to wake him up so he didn't hibernate through Christmas. Oh. 
See, the best thing for me about the John Lewis advert is that every year there's this furniture shop in Plandidno, North Wales. I think it's in North Wales, Plandidno. Okay. Anyway, uh, and every year they make a parody of it. And like, you know, there was that penguin one. Like, um, there was that really kind of cute penguin one. They just did the parody of it with this really tall guy dressed in a, in a, in a, um, penguin suit and just like throwing himself into the dock and stuff like that. It's really bizarre. But my favorite thing about that is waiting to see the parody that comes from that ra- random furniture. <laughs> I must miss them all. I th- I just don't I don't watch TV, so I think I miss them. Anyone watch normal TV anymore? <clears throat> no, we've you're, just you're got you're Netflix. Nice. You're always going for something completely random, but that everyone remembers. Well, I don't know. This is, again, this is probably predating Tom and Christy, but there was a particular advert, you know, I, and Tom knows how good my singing is. <laughs> so yep. if I went, oh, <laughs> body <laughs> form, body form, <laughs> just remember yep. that. I do. I do. Everyone, everyone remembers the body form advert. Well, there you go. Everybody remembers it. It doesn't matter what it was about. Even with my crap singing, everyone remembers it. So have something yeah. that everyone remembers, even if it's a really random product. <laughs> That's why um, Philip Bang is so famous, isn't it? Because they have a random shouty guy. Bang! And the dirt is gone. Hi, I'm Barry Scott. Barry Scott. <laughs> I said you buy one, you get one free. Do you remember that one? His name is not actually Barry Scott. He is an actor playing someone called Barry Scott, which (laughs) totally ruined it for me. Yeah, seriously, he's not. His name isn't. His name isn't Barry. I can't remember what his name is, but he's not called Barry Scott. He he says it was such exactly. He says it was such power that you assume that not only is he called Barry Scott, but also he's got some sort of authority to tell us why it's such a good cleaner. (laughs) Which is which is crushing people's dreams here. I know. Sorry, sorry to ruin that illusion for everyone. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I can't. I can't think of one, Pete. I'll I'll message you my answer. I I can't think of one. Next question, Roger White. Uh, what's it got here? We all know Wales is God's country, but where is your God's country and why? There is only one God's country, Roger. We all know. Wales Wales is a good second, along oh. with a few other places. <laughs> but there really is only one. There can be only one. One that's so amazing you left it and went to live in you, in England. Because that's where the work was. But I'm moving back. <laughs> I will be moving back. As long as... Well, I'm not even going to get political. But as long as things go, don't go horrendous, I'll move back to Scotland at some point, definitely. Graham, what about you? Where is your ideal place? Because the two druids are blatantly going to say Wales. <laughs> You know what? I, 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 I talk about this a lot with anybody who's can be bothered to listen to me. I am very, very proudly British because I love the fact we have so much in in our in our whole country. You know, and, me too. Yeah. And there there are things I love about the about England. There are things I love about Wales, and the things I love about Scotland, and the things I love about actually Ireland as a whole. I know Ireland isn't all our country but um and that there is beauty and incredible places to be found in both of them in all those yep. things um interesting enough so I, I was in wales this summer riding with, with, a, with a buddy and we were chatting all day every day on our intercoms because we, we just talk incessantly to each other and the year before we've been we've been in the highlands in scotland and we were saying if you had to choose between the roads in, we were, we were in Snowdonia, particularly North, North mm. Wales, uh, between that and the, and the roads uh, in, in the Highlands, where would you choose? And we said, we really couldn't put even a fag paper between the roads, as in, as in the joy of riding the roads. Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean, yeah. If we had to talk about scenery... Still Scotland, still Scotland. <laughs> when it, well, well, when it came to the scenery, the only thing we could put between them was the colours in Scotland. Mm. Because it had it had more variety in colour, and that mainly I, I think mainly down to the heather. So yeah, yeah. So just in terms of the colour, but you know, but then if you drive, yeah, you can you can ride through the peaks or the lakes or Yorkshire, and find beauty in those places as well. So I I, I think we are as a nation incredibly lucky to have what we have in such a small place. 
Aye. I'm a hundred percent with you on that. I'm I'm fierce I'm fiercely proud of being Scottish, but I consider myself British, definitely. Mm. Absolutely. And I've been gobsmacked by like the Peak District and the Lake District. Like the amount of times I've just steamed through that on the motorway and never actually gone off onto the you know the single track roads mm. and the the small b roads and stuff and i just started to do that at the end of 19 2019 and was just blown away and i was like right next year i'm i'm gonna devour all this mm. and yeah we, we know how that went what about you guys then is it gonna be wales or is there anywhere else that tickles your fancy well after graham's Beautiful answer, quite patriotic <laughs> and beautiful. Wales, answer. Wales. It really was. Um, the only other place that I have been which has come close, scenery-wise, for myself for uh, driving through, riding through, is Italy, oh, especially yeah. like the Tuscany area. Um, but if I was going to choose between Wales and Italy. It's, of course, going to be Wales. <laughs> Camry and Beth all the way. So, <laughs> Lovely, you know, isn't it? It's, uh, it's, it's, I just like... Uh, actually, I can't really follow Graham's answer. I think he put it so eloquently. That was that was a spot-on answer. We're very lucky, not just Wales, British Isles, Britain. Mm. You know, we're very lucky to have the the degree of change that we can. Like, the, the scenery can change within a few you know, kilometres of, of of each other. It's, um, we are lucky. We're really lucky. Definitely, yeah. It is crazy how, like, not just the scenery, but the people, the accents, the culture, everything can change yeah. within, you know, within 40, 50 miles. In fact, even yeah. less than that at times. Mm. It, it just changes so much throughout the UK. It's, I've kind of, I don't know about you guys, but the more you travel, does it make you appreciate what you've got here? That's yeah. how I found it. Yeah. Yeah, and I find myself Agreed. wanting to find out more about the UK. The more I travel elsewhere, I think, you know, God, we've got we've got places that will rival, maybe not weather, but we've got places that will rival <laughs> in terms of scenery and culture and stuff, right here in history, right here in in our own sort of country. Even in Wales, like I'm, I'm quite patriotic about being Welsh. No, and I, no, I, you're I, not. I really that doesn't come across. You know, I. Uh, I, I and even myself, there's places, there's so many places in Wales that I still haven't travelled to. And I, mm. that that really upsets me. And the fact that, um, you know, I, my, my children go to a Welsh school, so they, they speak and will speak fluent Welsh. Um, I don't speak fluent Welsh. I, I pick up on things here and there, and I, I did it in school. But, you know, that really upsets me that I don't even speak the language and, and that mm. I haven't even been like North Wales. There's so many areas in North Wales that I haven't been to, let alone thinking about, oh, where I'm going to travel around the world. We should be concentrating on where yeah. we're traveling, where, where we live, where, what's local, what's ours. You know, well, it's, uh, it's crazy. I kind of think maybe this year there might be a lot of that. There might be a lot of domestic sort of holidaying and, and travel. It might be focused mm. on that because I, yeah. I can't really... I don't see too much sort of European and international travel going on for quite a while, so who knows? We'll no. see. Tom, it's what about yourself? Explore, isn't it? it is definitely. Um, well, I live in Wales. Uh, I'm not. I'm not Welsh. Um, I came to university here and never left because I met my wife, uh, who is very Welsh. Um, and but I got to be honest, I. I would pick Canada. Would you? I I, I adore I? I adore Canada. Because um, it looks like Scotland. Yeah, I get you. I understand that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but the thing the thing I like about the thing I like about Scotland um, is that it is lovely and it has the real kind of difference in weather between very hot and very cold. But in Scotland, you hot do rain tend to and get cold rain. Yeah, you do tend to get a lot of wet in between it being very cold and very hot. It's very wet. Um, whereas I think with Canada, if it's winter, I want it to be properly winter. Yeah. Deep snow, clear yeah. blue skies, lovely snow. And that's what you get in Canada. You get gorgeous summers, you get gorgeous winters, and you don't get six months of Man. drivel yeah. in between like you do in Wales and Scotland and most of England. And yeah. I think that for me, um, 
Graham will tell you I'm not a big fan of being cold. Um, <laughs> I'm not a big fan of being massively hot either. <laughs> um, but if I'm going to be cold, I want to be in a, you know, I don't want to be wet and cold. I want to be, I love the fact that in Canada, you, you can have deep snow and it's a dry cold yeah. and that's okay. I like that. There's, you know, um, uh, yeah. And I think the the thing is, if you, I, I do love the scenery you get in Wales and things like that. But when I go to Canada, it just makes me think it's an exaggerated version of what you get in Wales. Everything's mm-hmm. bigger. You yeah. know, the, the roads are longer. Um, the people as well, just nicest people. In the in the majority of kind of cases in Canada, I just yeah, Canada Canada is. I would be living in Canada if my wife would let me. <laughs> <laughs> I loved I loved uh, British British Columbia, the Yukon, and I I know Alaska is not Canada, but I wanted to get up to that point as well. I I had to turn around in the Yukon, but but like BC and Yukon were just everything I thought Canada was going to be. That's what it was there. The middle bit, the prairies, was just. It was just flat nothing <laughs> for mile upon mile, day after day of nothing. Yeah. Right, uh, next question then. Steve Wright, hi from New Zealand. Looking forward to the new show, guys, and the best of luck. Is the show, oh, I think we've covered this, is the show going to be just UK-based or a bit international as well? Well, you said it will be international. It will be It will be international in terms of you can watch it anywhere in the world. Um, mm. It was going to be more international uh, than it's going to be in terms of where we feel. Um, you know, we, we have to take into account what's going on at the moment. Um, yeah. And that has meant that there are some things we were hoping to do and we will still do them, but we'll push them. You know, we'll probably p- push them onto season two. Uh, season one will be far more UK based simply because um we can't at the moment make plans and, and trust yeah. that they will stay firm. Uh, so we, we have to kind of play around with that. So, but yeah, you can watch it anywhere you like. Cool. So you'll be able to watch it in New Zealand. You'll be able to watch it via the Dunlop website on the Dunlop website. Yeah. Is that Dunlop UK or is that going to be the Dunlop international? Do you know? Uh, it's on the Dunlop, definitely Dunlop UK. Okay. Um, but you can, still log on to the UK site from anywhere in the world. Um, there you go, Steve. I don't know whether it's going on to the international or not, if I'm honest. Okay, cookie. We will um, let you know as soon as we know. Um, we're, lo- we're looking about August, aren't we? That, that it'll yes, uh, towards st- the end of August, yeah. Mm-hmm. So. so just keep your eye on the, the show, social media, and all of our social media. There'll be links down below to follow everybody involved, and we'll keep you up to date with progress. Chris Murphy, hi all. Can you give us an insight into the show? Like, sorry, um, folks, I don't actually read the questions beforehand, so they're as much of a shock to me as they are to you. So we may well have covered some things as they come up. Can you give us an insight into the show? Like, will it just be bike reviews or are you delving deeper into the bike world? Are you new technology in the way bikes are built and designed from tyres to seats? I think you covered that earlier, Tom. I think we covered it. I mean, in terms of specific things about how bikes are built and things like that, um, you know, we're, we're certainly doing um, planning a feature um, around um, a. Sorry, something just randomly popped up on my screen. Go away. There you go. Um, <laughs> um, uh, we're actually going to be hopefully building something in the show. Um, I, I not that I don't want to tell the audience what it is, but you guys don't can't know what it is. <laughs> uh, the whole point is it's a bit of a surprise for you as well. Um, so. We're actually going to be doing some building. We're featuring uh, some um, bikes that are uh, kind of not quite cost- custom, but, you know, small, you know, um, UK manufacturers. And we'll have a look at how they have built their boats, uh, bi- uh, boats, bikes and design their bikes and things like that. You're, you're thinking about the UK canoe, um, the UK Rowan thing, aren't you? I, I'm not. Very, you are. I'm really not. Tom. As soon as I as soon as I posted on my Instagram about the around the UK rowing challenge, Tom was straight on the phone. <laughs> no, no, I was on the phone about something to do with the show. <laughs> so so was, is, is Tom doing it with you, Bruce? He is now. Yes, yes. He's just said he's just committed on 
I, I haven't even said I'm doing it. I did one post and I've had so many people going, are you going to roll around the UK? I'm like, I, 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 I have never ridden on the water in my life. I, I, think, I think it's a fantastic challenge, both of you. Well done. I want to do the Atlantic. I genuinely want to row the Atlantic. I genuinely okay, want to do that. I, I'll tell you this. If I could get fit enough, I'll do the channel and I will do round the It's only the about UK. eight miles. Yeah, yeah, but you've got to start somewhere, Jesus. <laughs> and I'll, I'll do round... I will not do the Atlantic. <laughs> it's, Brian, not, me and you are just it's massively dangerous. Yeah, we, we can we, we can be the kind of land based. Yeah, yeah, we'll just well, well, well yeah, we'll we'll have like banners and and beer and we'll stay well, on the land. Well, yeah, and those idiots can go on the water because I am not going anywhere near any water. I ever. think I think we're going to say we're going to do fours and we're going to do the Atlantic. Yeah, awesome, awesome. You heard yeah. it here. Fours, yeah, Hell all no. of it. <laughs> Next one, Ian Preston. What's your favourite biking gadget? Oh, that's a good one. Biking gadget. Oh, I like my gadgets. Biking gadget. Mm. Mine's not very gadgety, but it's a game changer, and it's heated gloves. Uh -huh, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh huh. Heated kit. I, I, yeah, I get really what? cold, really easy, and um, my poor little hands. You know, so Do you prefer gloves. heated gloves no, over like... handlebar, uh, heated heated grips. Oh, shut up, Tom! I want gloves, all right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, shut up, Tom. <laughs> I've got control over my car. Now. All right, okay, all right. I changed my answer. Um, heated handlebar grips are the game changer for me. Is that better? <laughs> I was just asking whether you you're on your own, mate. You're first. on your own. Oh, jeez. Okay. Okay. I'm just going to keep digging my little hole over yeah. here. Look at Graham just sat in the corner like that. Keep all quiet. I, I did say before I started, I did say it's not very, you know, gadgetry in the wizardry gadgetry world, but, you know, it's a game changer is having warm hands. He heated kit is a proper, it's a game changer, but it spoils you. Because Thank as soon you. as as soon as you get heated gloves and your, your your hands aren't cold, you start thinking, oh, oh, like, oh, my body's cold now, or my feet are cold. And it, 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 for me, it just a heated suit. Well, yeah, you, you end up like that, don't you? You're just like cocooned in this electric blanket thing to go riding in a bike. You might like, as well just stay inside. <laughs> yeah, you definitely yeah. get spoiled when when Tom and I rode up to um, uh, uh, Northern Port in Europe in Norcap. It was the first time I'd ever ridden with anything heated, and we had heated vests, yeah, you know, oh, um, wow. gilets. Yeah, yeah. Oh, just <laughs> you think, why have I been? I know. Why have I been, you know, been so tough for the last 15, 20 years? Going, oh, I don't care. I don't care about the cold. I can just go with it. No, <laughs> it's warm. It's so easy. The oh, best oh, bit no. about those though was 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 the what? heat round because it went right up into the neck, didn't it? Yeah. So you, you actually just got. A nice little oh, warm wow. seal around your neck. Cause that, oh. Oh. They're amazing. Yeah. It's true, that. though, isn't it? Because the years I went through riding on my Jixxer with, with not even heated grips, like, I'm not putting heated grips on that. And I was riding all through the year, even, you know, like, four o'clock in the morning going in and out of work. It's minus blooming eight, minus ten, snowing in ice, and you're riding. And now I'm like, oh, it's, it's only about four degrees out there. It's a bit, a bit nippy. And you think, <laughs> God, what sort of softy have I become? <laughs> uh, right. Biking gadget for me. Uh, cool. Play me. Biking gadget. What gadgets do I use? I was going to say, you've tested quite a few recently, haven't you, Bruce? Well, I mean, I've, what gadgets do I have on the, on the bike? I suppose I've got I've got like the dash cam type things, but I mean I don't really consider them gadgets. Are they gadgets? Like dash yeah, cams for a motorbike? Mm. They're not exciting gadgets, but they're gadgets. No, it's not. It's just I've got that for when I get in an accident, which tends to happen quite a bit. Um, let, let, let's be honest. Any gadget that is about your safety is never an exciting gadget. Yeah, it's a bit <laughs> beige, isn't it? It's a little bit boring. Just mm. what's your gadget then, Tom? I, I'm I'm gonna. Do the same as what I think Graham will probably say. 
which is uh, intercoms. Mm. Uh, I, 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 I had two answers. One was intercoms, definitely, <laughs> definitely, because I, I love being able to talk when you're riding. Yeah. yeah. But the other one, and far be it for me to kind of talk about adventuring rather than just pure motorbiking, but the Helinox chair, and I, I know that's a brand thing, but yeah, a Helinox type of chair. After years, years of, yeah. of, of, of touring and traveling, and basically either sitting on my, you know, my, my metal, generally for me, metal mule box or yeah, whatever it is, or on a little kind of tripod chair, the Helinox camping chair, or yep. now many equivalents are available, it doesn't have to be Helinox, just that, I mean, genuinely, for me, as I got older, when I get to the end of the day's riding, my back hurts, to sit back and go, oh. Yeah, so I so get that. And so light was just that there. Yeah. And, and also then the, yeah, an equivalent bed as well. A, f- a friend of mine, a friend of mine, a couple of years ago, was it? I, I was I was on the adventure zone with with Nathan Millward and a couple of mates came to the show to you know say hello and have a look at the bikes and stuff and one of my mates bought one of them and we were all ripping seven bells out of him for spending the amount of money that he did on this chair <laughs> and then we went away on a trip <laughs> and, he, and he pulled this chair out and and it's like a lazy boy isn't it he was just chill he's a wee lad anyway ex bootneck ex marine so he's a wee lad and he this thing was just like a lazy boy for him. And we're all sat on the ground, uncomfortable. <laughs> and he's yeah. like, who's laughing now? Like, well, those okay, things look so small. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I'm, a, I'm a big guy. I'm six foot three, 17 stone. But those those chairs, I, I, to be fair, if you're on soft ground, you're sitting on the ground because the legs just sit straight in. <laughs> so you need something underneath it. But yeah, they were a proper, in terms of the, uh, the Apre ride, they were a game changer for me. And so, they, do, you- they do a wide version now as well. <laughs> is, I was this is, now I can say this because I would need one too. Is that the two man version? Is that like the double? <laughs> no, the no. Double? They just do. They just do what they call the XL version, which um, All right. the guy, the guys in the for the Harley Raiders. Shop, well, I, 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 I had one and it got nicked. Oh, uh, at a bike event, annoyingly, which isn't very common, really. Awesome. Uh, normally, bikers don't do that. Um, it got nicked, and as a thank you, uh, as a as a kind of yeah, just because they're great guys, the guys at the Adventure Bike Shop uh, sent me a new one, which was the XL <clears> version, <throat> and then yeah. they put um, a, um, a embroidered Geek Media into it as well for me. So nice. I got, I got a full on custom extra large one now. <laughs> Up yours, bike thieves! Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I've just been thinking, my gadget. I think. I get a lot of comments on this, and I'm not paid by them or anything like that. They just sent me one for free. It's that visor cat thing, that bit of rubber that you put over your glove and you can wipe your visor okay. with. Hmm. It it's simple and it it just does a great job. I don't I don't faff about with any of the cleaner or change the sponges or any of that. I just I just use it to to wipe my visor when I'm riding, and it's, yeah, that's it's a great. good one. That hmm. is a good one. Does it work better yeah, than good. the ones that you know? Because you get some gloves with them kind of built in, don't you? Yeah, you do. I've I've never found any gloves that did as good a job as the visor cat until don't, see there I've got the the Keese or Case G701 heated gloves. I've got them and they have a little blade. It's only a tiny inch long blade and that's really good. I found that really good at clearing the visor. But that's the first that's the first sort of inbuilt glove one I found that that does anywhere near as good a job. There'll be a video coming out on that soon. <laughs> I haven't filmed it, but there will be a vid coming out on this. <laughs> no usernames left. With all of your combined travel and experience covering countries and continents in a vast wilderness of outback, outback Russia or America, imagine if you had seen a Bigfoot-type mysterious being. Would, in your mind, Bigfoot have a hairy human style... Oh my God, I've just read the rest of this. <laughs> Sheesh. <laughs> <laughs> wow <laughs> thanks for this one um would in your mind bigfoot have a hairy human style dick or a lipstick style dog unit thanks paul wow 
First of all, Paul. Can you repeat the question? What? No, no, he can't repeat the question. <laughs> Maybe I should start pre reading these questions. I honestly didn't hear the question. I'd like him to repeat it, please. Would would Bigfoot have a human style appendage or a, a like a lipstick style dog appendage? What in my mind or Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Obviously it's something that everyone thinks about a lot. Does anyone want to answer that? <laughs> what do you think, Bruce? I think I think Bigfoot would have well, we're all apes, aren't we? So I think it would just have a just a just a just a tadger, what a tadger looks like, but probably a bit hairy. I, I don't imagine they manscape it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I think I, I think if he's got big feet, you know. <laughs> that is such a female answer. <laughs> big foot, big, you know. Personality, big, obviously. Big arm. <laughs> big, 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 big ego. Big ego. That's what big foot has. Big shoes. Yeah, yeah he was a so, shit. So full of himself. <laughs> Never called back. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't. <laughs> That's amused. Tom Graham, do you want to do you want to comment on that or? Oh, I'm not sure I can add anything to that really. <laughs> um, yeah. You see the caliber of my patrons. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Well, yeah, I'm. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Dunlop. Ferry Dax, really sorry. <laughs> Neil Neil Burton. Hi folks. Suddenly, Looking... suddenly you're not gonna get any suddenly those tires that you were gonna yeah. give away aren't happening. <laughs> this bike show's not happening now, yeah. Um <laughs> Hi folks, this is Neil Burton. Hi folks, looking forward to the show. Question to all. How much danger would you be willing to put yourself in for the sake of making the show? And what's the most dangerous thing you've done on a motorcycle until now? Hmm. I'll do anything, Tom. Don't care. Literally took the words right out of my mouth. I'm, uh, I, I'll, whatever. I'll, I'll shoot out of a cannon if you want me to. As long as I can get my mug on tally, I'm, I'm, I'm there. <laughs> <laughs> the most dangerous thing I've ever done on the motorcycle was on a trip with Graham. Uh, we were doing uh, Dakar Dreams with Danny, John Jules as well. Uh, and we got to the no man's land between... Um, was it between, Western Sahara uh, and West, Mauritania. West, Western Sahara yeah, and yeah. Mauritania. Yeah. And the year before I'd gone out there and done it as well. Um, and, you know, you, you go through this kind of big no man's land and there's burnt out cars and there's all sorts of things. And, you know, you hear all these things about there's loads of mines out there. If you go yep. off with beaten cars. And, um, and for some reason, um, Graham and Danny decided that the cameraman should probably lead the way through that bit. <laughs> <laughs> <That's cool. laughs> like, you... Oh, you've been through it before, Tom. Lead the way. <laughs> exactly. You knew where you were going. <laughs> but for for anyone that's not been, it's like you you come down through Morocco and Western Sahara, and that's lovely, isn't it? That's it's adventure, mm. but it's yeah. sanitized. There's roads. Mm. People are nice. It's fine. You get to that border. And the Western Sahara side is lovely. No problem. It's great. And I remember the, the border guard even shook my hand and said, bon chance, you know, good luck. And they open this border and then it's just like the road stops. It's sand. It looks like something out of Mad Max and everything changes, doesn't it? You go down, you go down like a sand, if you can call it a street, you go down like a sand street. And then it, when I was there, it forked. So you've got a, a track oh, yeah, yeah. going off left and a track going right. Exactly. Nothing in the middle except it's all just sand. It's a desert. And nothing. And there's no signs. The right way to no. go. And no. you know that one of them is where all the smugglers hang out, and one of them. Yeah. Is... <laughs> well, I went right, <laughs> which turned out to be the wrong one. Allegedly. I was going to say. I remember it was left. <laughs> yeah, I went right and then ended up getting stuck in a minefield, and that was fun. So, um, yeah. I wouldn't advise... What did you think of Mauritania? We just went through it so quickly, didn't we? Yeah. I mean, our, 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 yeah, the, the, the travel advice we got was, don't go there. So, mm. uh, but if you, have, <laughs> if you have to, if you have to go there, just make your way through. I, I remember Bruce, yeah, the very first time we met, and we talked about this yeah. at some length. 
because uh, you went at a slightly different way to us. And that, you know, you had, you had, as I recall, quite a bad experience there, didn't you? At Rosso, Good yeah, I, I sort of yes. headed south the short way and then and then rather than do that sort of, was it 40 or 50 mile off-road to the border and then into Senegal, I went left along the road to Rosso and then... Which is the way we went way. as well, yeah. Oh, it is? Well, yeah, yeah, I, had a, yeah. I had a bad time at Rosso, yeah. yeah. I, I, well, I mean, luckily luck at Rosso, we, we didn't. We, we didn't have a bad time, but we, we wanted to go the off-road way on the, on the, on the corrugations. Mm -hmm. we, had, we had such bad problems with our bikes. We had to make a, well, I had to make an, ex an executive decision not to go because we, you know, we had, you know, we had lots of problems. Um, but we didn't have a, we didn't have a bad crossing at, at Rosso. Luckily, we didn't have a wow. bad problem. Um, but Mauritania itself, we just, we just blasted through. You know, we kind of yeah. um, stuck to the main roads, wild camped for two nights. No, Did I, you? I, I stayed, yeah, we stayed we, in the we, tent first night yeah, and then wild camped. The first night, we kind of, we literally went over the border and went straight to um, this kind of camp, we hired a kind of Bedouin tenty thing, didn't we? Hmm. Um, and then we got up super early next morning. Down because they always say that part when you get south of the capital, it gets safer. Hmm. So we were kind of like blast it down through uh, part of the kind of capital, yeah, New Hampshire. Yeah. And then, and then didn't didn't we we kind of went right off into the kind of sand dunes and camped and then in the morning some kids were like you know this is the minefield right <laughs> Do you remember well, that and then well, we and then we, we did. Yeah. and then we had to drive out following our exact track that we drove in <laughs> <laughs> yes yes yeah, yes yeah yes, yeah I, that's all I got told was do not do not go off the road because it's it's mined everywhere. I was just like, this is not what I expected the Sahara to be like. I expected to be riding through the dunes and camping in the sand. And <laughs> that was, Instead, that was I just my got first robbed experience. by the police every blooming hundred metres. My first <laughs> experience of terrifying spiders. in in Because uh, on the first time I went down through there, we got south of the border and we, uh, south of New Akshot and camped. Um, and we were in this kind of weird field thing and all these local kids came over. And there were all these little holes in the kind of in the mud floor, uh, yeah. quite small things. And these kids were coming over and showing us these huge bugs they'd found, like big, like big kind of like um, kind of stick insects that were like half the length of their arm. And they go, look at this, da, 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 da. and we're all like, ah, oh, da, 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 da. And then this tiny spider came out of this hole, and all the kids just legged it. <laughs> <laughs> at this point, you're like. Wait a sec. If they, if they're, if they're running, that, when they've had all these big things on their hand and they're running because of that, so I spent the whole night in the centre of my tent like this. <laughs> I'm really good with creeper coolies, aren't I, Gray? Oh, you love them. Yep. Yeah. Would you say that's the most dangerous thing that you've done then is is <laughs> Mauritania? On, on a bike, on a bike, I mean. Depends whether you mean stupid, you know, bad or... I would say like just mortal danger. Just like if if you if you screw this up, it isn't going to. It's not going to end well. Yeah, I think that's for me. I think that's the, certainly the first time I went um, was far less. Yeah, was far scarier um, mm. for various reasons, but far too far too long to get into that now. <laughs> Yeah, I, I yeah. want I want to go back. I definitely want to go back and conquer the demons. Definitely, I'll I'll do Africa. I, I, one day I will go back and do it. Yeah, I, I think I think we I think we had in many respects, uh, although we had lots of mechanical problems. Outside of that, we had a reasonably easy journey through West mm. Africa. Um, I, I was far more scared two years beforehand going through North Africa, through Libya mm. and Egypt, because that was only two or three months. Yeah, with hindsight, we were two or three months ahead of the Arab Spring. Well, that, that through Tunisia and Libya and Egypt, and then the Arab Spring basically followed us. Wow. We were in March. The Arab Spring then followed us that spring yeah. Yeah, yeah. down through Tunisia. Yeah, the bomb attacks, the beaches, and through Libya. Um, so it didn't it didn't it was it wasn't scary at the time, but kind of with hindsight, you think mm. actually that, that really was. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, Chris has had enough. <laughs> <laughs> we, we've bored her with Africa. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, well, I tell you, what, we can come back to to that one for for Christy when she when she returns. Next question is Trevor Mould. 
A question to the guests. If you two if you if you two were to follow in Bruce's footsteps and travel around the world on two wheels, has he told you about this trip yet? I, I get all this abuse <laughs> all the time. Which way would you go? East to west or west to east and why? I'd go I'd I'd go the same way as long way around. I think it, after after a huge amount of you know difficult terrain and things like that, it's nice to know that at the end of it you've got the nice easy kind of Canada USA, you know, in terms of the riding, you know, so you, yeah. you never if you if you do it the other way, I think you'll go through that bit feeling a bit bored for a start. Mm -hmm. not really appreciating it and spending your whole time worrying about the far more difficult stuff. Yeah. Whereas nothing's that, be, nothing's that much different when you get to the States. It's just it's a slightly yeah. different culture, but it's all the same, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I'm not Tom. I think I'd go... Uh, east. East or west. Uh, yeah, go east. But a slightly different route to the, to the, to the long way group, uh, long way gang, because... Mm -hmm. um, if if I could, I'd love to go through Iran. If I could, mm, yeah. So I just everything I read about it is it just makes me think it's somewhere I'd love to go to. If I Absolutely. could, um, and then also through the stands. Yeah. So you know, I kind of Kyrgyzstan, Turkmenistan, all yeah. Just again, I've read, I've I've heard just such amazing things about it, um, and then and then I'm trying to remember does that then take me to Mongolia? Yeah. But you know, and then maybe pick up more of the Mongolia and route. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I think I think all, almost my ideal route would be kind of to follow um, the, the Mondo and Duro route, but mm -hmm. with, the, with the stands in the middle, you know, kind of yeah. east and west, and then go down to South America, over to Africa, and back up. Yeah. I, I'm the same, same as you, Graham. I really want to do the stands. I'm, I'm mm. gutted. I missed that out on on my trip. I, I'd love to go back and do the stands and the old Mongol rally. Mm. I had I had the I had a young couple on here, Paul and Holly, and they did the Mongol rally on the little Sinus one two fives. You know this one two five terrains, and and Holly literally just passed her her CBT so that she could do the the Mongol, and, really? and they went and did it. And you, and then I've had uh, Roxy around the world, Roxy on, mm. uh, Roxana Polish lass that lives in Glasgow now. She's doing it on a is it a nineteen ninety nine Fireblade. So That's she's right. done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's done all the stands and everything on the fireblade, and I'm like, oh, I want to do that. I've got to do that. <laughs> yeah. So watch this space, Christy. You missed out earlier. Um, what's the most dangerous thing you've done on a motorbike until now? Like Bear in mind that Tom's listening. Everyone's implying by this by this thing that I'm going to make you do massively dangerous things on the show, <laughs> and they're right. <laughs> I gotta be honest, I'm gonna sound like the boring one of the group now, but the compared to the stories that you guys have just told, the, the, there's really nothing um, you know, life threatening or or anything that I've been like, oh my god, this is just like the worst case scenario I've ever been in. I mean Have you had a night some... out in Carnarvon? <laughs> there's been some incidents where I've thought Oh, oh dear! That could have gone a bit, a bit, a bit gnarly. But but you know, compared to um, the actual, uh, um, uh, you know, the places that you guys have been and the actual, you know, um, and factors that that you've experienced, there's there's nothing quite. It's quite actually boring with me, really. There's nothing I've done which I thought, oh my god, there's you know, like I said, there's been some little scenarios, but uh, but nothing too taxing. I'm waiting. I mean, obviously, we got the show to do, so I might be able to, <laughs> after the show, you can ask me, and I'll be like, oh, yeah, there was that time when well, you know, I rode a bike and I did a flip, front flip, and then went into a cannon and shot out of it. Um, you're doing you're doing you the know? Isle of Man, aren't you? You're, you're doing the Isle of Man one. Oh, I, I'll take that on. Take that on, piece I, of piss. That's fine. <laughs> I had the Chasing the Racing podcast lads, Dom Harbertson and Chrissy Rouse. I had them on the podcast. And... I have committed myself to doing the next time there's a TT. I've committed myself to doing a pillion lap with Dom around the TT circuit, and I'm also doing a BSB pillion lap with Chrissy Rouse when that happens. So, if you want, I could if you never doing, do pillion. 
on we can that. arrange that oh. tom if you're I'll up trade, for it I'll christy trade if you're up that, for it yeah that can i'm be sure mine. yeah if, if if we can sort it out i'm so i'm sure dom would be willing to have you on the back of the bike and do a lap of the tt circuit if you want i ride fantastic pillion i really do <laughs> I Honestly, hate I, I, no, I, I obviously I like good, it. you know, as well, but as Billion goes, I am That's the trailer. Off. I honestly am. Awesome. I am amazing at it. <laughs> right, I'm a Dom. good Pillion passenger, aren't I, Grace? <laughs> I hate it. I hate okay, going Pillion. Oh, Tom, it. I can imagine you're a nightmare. Graham, I bet he's a nightmare, isn't he? Uh, he I think it had more to do with the fact that he's 17 stone and my He's a very considerate Pillion. There's just, there's just a lot of you. I'm a choke then. You've got a lot of love to give, Tom. Much like myself, we've got a lot of love to give, mate. Dom, Dom, lot, if you're watching this or listening to this, drop me a line, mate. We'll make this happen. We'll make it happen. Um... Next one, Tony Rolls. Question to the brains of the outfit, or all of you, if you have an opinion. Don't know which one that is. Will road racing be featuring at all? Everyone knows about the TT in Northwest 200, but the smaller Irish Southern 100 would be gagging for some of the spotlight. I'm sure an independent racer would let you follow them for a day. Good luck on the show. Ooh. Are we doing anything mm. like that at all? Um, we are working on doing some stuff with racing. It's... it's mm -hmm. um, not road racing in this series uh it's it's track racing um we obviously are looking at a kind of a feature about the tt um but obviously the tt isn't going to run this year um so it's a far more kind of in-depth uh look at the history of the tt and things like that uh but we'll we'll be out there on the isle of man you know riding the road circuit as it you know as anyone can do without you know taking the mick with it um, it's certainly something that we would like to see and do in future, in, uh, yeah, in future series, but it won't be in the next, it won't be in this coming series, but certainly if they want to get in touch and we can talk about it for, um, series two, love to. Awesome. Cool. So if there's any racers out there that fancy it, either drop me a line or drop Tom a line via the motorbike TV show links down below via their social media. And, um, We'll make it happen. That's you committed now, Tom. Hope you know that. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I seem to be committing to an awful lot. Apparently, I'm I'm rowing around the country. No, no, no. The Atlantic. <laughs> the Atlantic. No, the, I told you the Atlantic. The UK one happening. is a warm up, but you know the main the main one is the Atlantic. Oh, great! I haven't even mentioned this to my wife yet. She's if she if she actually listens to this podcast, she'll be going, "What? What? What are you doing?" <laughs> Next question, Stuart Bailey. How do you manage the work-life balance when working with motorcycles daily and riding for pleasure? Is there any overlap? Oh, that's a good one, actually. I don't know how you guys find it, but for me, when this wasn't my job, it was like I did it for the love of it. I rode a lot more. Now I'm I'm lucky if I ride once a week at the moment. I'm literally editing and just dealing with the business side of things pretty much seven days a week. And it's it's like you have to force yourself out there to go and ride now. Now, certainly for me, um, a number of people go, oh, God, you've got the best job in the world. You spend all day playing on bikes. I, I don't. I feel, I spend my day filming other people play on boats, bikes. <laughs> uh, I, I, I barely ride now. And it, it is a shame. Um, you know, and I, I try to do it when I can. Uh, but, you know, it, like anything, when it's your job, it um, it changes how you feel about it. And you can still enjoy it, but it becomes a very different way of enjoying it. And actually, I I feel that I'm incredibly lucky to have the job I have. Um, and I, I, you know, I I love what I do, uh, but it has changed my relationship with motorcycling. Mm. For the better or worse? I don't know. Mm. Um, it's no longer a. It's no longer a hobby, you know. It's it's work, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and it's. 
I, I, I sometimes get quite jealous because I'm watching, you know, I'm filming other people playing on these amazing bikes. And what I really want to do is get on the bike and ride it myself. Yeah. Um, you know, and I try and ride as much as I can, you know, certainly with um, Adventure Bike TV, we do a Tales from Trail segment where I go on a bike with them. Um, but yeah, I, I, I find myself appreciating... Uh, the kind of technology of a bike now a bit more I think you know uh, for me it's, it's hard to, it's hard to express really I don't, I don't quite know how to I still absolutely love bikes um, but my relationship has just changed and I, mm. I'm not sure whether for the better or worse or just just changed I think I, I focused very this last year I mean this last year's you can't measure anything off this last year, can you? Because it's been no. such, <laughs> in our lifetimes, it's been such a unique occurrence, hasn't it? Hopefully, yeah. hopefully a unique occurrence. But um, this year, I focus mostly on bike reviews because bike reviews get the views, they help you grow the channel. And I've because it's my first year going for it, I've really wanted to try and grow the channel as much as I can. So it's just been bike review, bike review, bike review, kit review, all this sort of stuff. But that's not what I want to do. You know, my channel is the whole live your life thing. It's about getting out there and doing stuff. Not not always to do with bikes, but just this year it has been, you know. So for me, this year has been like, okay, I've done that. We've grown a bit. We've we've got some a good following. We've got some good traction. But next year I'm wanting to try and promote the sort of live your life thing more of what i want to do you know i want to ride more i want to meet more people i want to travel more especially after this shit bag of a last year i i, I want to <laughs> get out as soon as we can and and start living life again you know <laughs> so it's been it's been a good year in terms of i've had a lot of manufacturers coming on board and it's been great to work with them and get all these different bikes that's not it's not just what i want me and the channel to be about, you know. So mm. <clears throat> it's it's been good, but I want to try and grow that and ride a bit more next year as well. This year, sorry, this year, this year. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I guess for me the situation is a bit different because I, I have a full time job doing mm. something completely different. So it, it's there. There is a there is a um, not so much in the last twelve months because we said much earlier we haven't been filming this that much, mm. but it, it can be quite a balancing act trying to fit in yeah if we if we're filming um i don't know for argument's sake you know, we, we might do 15 or 20 days of filming in a year mm -hmm. maybe a bit less sometimes um and actually if you think about it that's like the equivalent to your normal you know, your allocation of holiday for the whole year yeah and yeah, yeah. i try I, I do have to uh, luckily i work for myself so um and i have a very understanding business partner i can kind of fit that in alongside the day job um, mm. and i'm very fortunate to be able to do that so that was part of the reason why i decided to work for myself 20 yeah. years ago was having flexibility and to be able to do these kind of things so mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm i'm very lucky in that respect i, I think so unlike top because i don't have to live and breathe it every single day my my, my passion and love for it is undiminished yeah it, it just yeah. it just grows i just want to do more awesome awesome what about you christy um, well, just echoing what you guys have said, really, um, you know, as soon as you turn any passion, love, hobby into a work, mm -hmm. it does actually become work and you get all the negative sides of that as well. Um, for me personally, for the past couple of years, the, the, the hardest balance that I've come up against is is have started a family uh, mm. and also, um, you know, without throwing the gender card in, being mum as well. Mm. It's, it's as soon as you become mum, obviously, and as soon as you become a parent, full stop, it isn't about gender. But, uh, you know, for me, being mum, everything has been just on the, the back burner. You know, my children are, are young and they do yeah. need me and I have been there for them. So that, that, it's now now they're getting a bit older that balance now is coming back around and it's it's i'm really lucky that i've got a really supportive family who view biking not just 
as a hobby, you know, that it is actually work as well. And mm -hmm. I'm very, very lucky that I've got people who understand that and people who have got my back and, and, and who can help me so I can still get out there and, and ride and still be involved with it and in the community. Um, but like anything, that, that balance sometimes, you know, sometimes you feel guilty don't you when you actually mm. think oh i'm gonna do that and it's not it's not work it is enjoyment and it is away from the kids and sometimes you know you you, you can be a bit bogged down with that guilt of should i be doing this you know mm. isn't is, is it should i just be doing you know uh parenting stuff and mum stuff mm. but at the end of the day and especially with you bruce you echo like you know live your life you i, I yeah i am mum and i'm i'm worker but i'm still I'm still me as well. So Absolutely. And yeah. part of me is bikes and it always has been. Um, so yeah, it, the, the balance is hard, but I think fa for me, family uh, is the, the strongest part for me. And it's what, it's what enables me to still be able to be involved in it and out in it. Um, you know, and as selfish as it sounds, once I get on a bike, the guilt kind of slips away a little. <laughs> Just a tiny but, bit, you know. And then as soon as I walk back through the door, I'm mum again, you know. Yeah. I'm not yeah, being yeah, funny. Yeah. I'm a cool mum. I'm a badass mum. So. <laughs> I bet you are. Now you're going to be on the telly now as well. Happy days. <laughs> Oh, my boy's probably going to just be embarrassed about me. I, I don't blame him, really. <laughs> I um, I was, when I did my trip and I was doing the whole YouTube thing as I went, I did think to myself, because my boy was, God, how old's my boy? 15. He was 15 when I left. And I thought, to, I did think to myself, oh, God, this poor, you know, if if this went big, I didn't know what was going to happen with the trip. But I did think to myself, he might get some stick you know, from his mates in school, but the total opposite happened. His mates were all following the trip, so you and he and he was like, "Oh, all his mates were doing was talking to him about my trip." And <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah, that it that is, was. It is, a, it is a worry, like you know, you forget yeah. that when you have kids, you know, it, it is about them as well. It, it genuinely is, and and you know, when my son is on. His, his gaming calls and I burst in the room, you know, <laughs> kind of like do the lingo and yeah, what are you doing, bro? What's happening? And he's just like, oh, I'm on a call, mum. And I'm like, oh, I'm so sorry. I really am. And then, you know, I I, I, I did break into song, which is what I want to do. <laughs> yeah, I break but into no, song around my kids you. all the time. Yeah, you know, I should punish him, really. I should break into song. But uh, yeah, I know what you mean. You, you forget that... Um, their lives as well uh, and everything is online everything is so online now yeah. it's so accessible to them like yeah. they are the gen they are the online generation and i forget that i'm like oh you mm. won't see this he's not going to be no one's going to know about this uh, and, oh and yeah they will <laughs> oh yeah they will oh yeah totally so yeah <laughs> i agree with you there. i don't know but i mean if we can figure out if there's a big billboard opposite their school that I can get get a big <laughs> motorbike TV promotional poster <laughs> opposite the school. They'll love that, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, definitely. They'll love it. Love it. They'll love it. <laughs> Next one then. Ashley Wright. Excuse me. Hi, everybody. Really looking forward to the show. I really... Oh, sorry. This is this is blowing smoke up my arse. I do apologise. No, read uh, it. Read it. Read it. We insist. Sorry, sorry about this. I really think that having Bruce as part of the team will enhance the show. His endearing... Oh, this feels really weird. <laughs> His endearing and genuine personality will... This is my wife writing this. Thank you, wife. Um, His endearing and genuine personality will shine through and the viewers will adhere to that. Anyway, enough of that. Thanks, Ashley. Cheers. Question to the guests. What got you all into biking and did anyone in particular have an influence on you? We've been having a conversation about this today, haven't we, Greg? Yeah. <laughs> so, um, when I was when I was fifteen, I had no desire to ride a motorbike at all, mm -hmm. not even the slightest. And a friend and I were trying to build a, go, uh, a motorized go kart, so we bought a friend's mum's. We, we used to call it the Granny Step Through Moped, the old mopeds that had had pedals. That's how you started it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, a little 50cc thing and we were going to take the engine out and put it into a go-kart and we rode it from his, from our friend's house back to my mate's house through our little country sleepy village I don't know half a mile um, and of course we just took back roads and stuff <laughs> we shouldn't have been riding it but yeah, <laughs> and, and that hooked me and then suddenly I was hooked and that was it 
Come up with another it. one. I mean, you just go and ride them up the local woods and uh, never look back. That's it. That's what, that, that's what hooked me, was a granny step through moped. Bosh. That's awesome. Christy, what about you? Okay, so my biking influence uh, came from my, my granddad, my papa. Um, and when we were kids, uh, we spent a lot of time over my nan and my papa's house. And my pop was just always tinkering with his, he had a Kawasaki GT 550. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was just, it, it was his bike. And he was always either just tinkering with it or maintaining it or doing little jobs on it. And so predominantly my childhood was sat watching him uh, work on it or down the garage with him whilst he was sort of doing like, you know, maintenance on it, talking about bikes. Um, and I just remember him and my nan would like sort of pull up outside our house on it. And I'd just be out <laughs> the window, like just obsessed with this image of them riding up and pulling up and my nan pillion, you know, and they were in their yeah. like sixties at this point. And I just remember looking at them and thinking, you badasses. I, I, <laughs> I I couldn't, like, as a child, there was nobody on this planet who was cooler than than they were, um, you know. And, and my pop, he, he rode well into his 80s. He's kicked his, kicked his leg over a bike until his 80s, and he is just my biggest hero. Um, and he he is the guy that, that got me into, into biking, for sure. I'm actually wearing his T-shirt tonight, mm -hmm. uh, you know, as, uh, as homage. Um, he was just an amazing person and spending so much time with him in bikes. And then that led on to things like we'd be watching, you know, uh, biking documentaries, obviously that evolved then into motor GPs and things like that. It was just mm. time spent with him was about bikes. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I'm so lucky that I had the coolest pop in the whole wide world. I really am. And he got me into it. So you're right into your racing, aren't you? Is that right? You, you've got quite a love of, of racing. I, do I, I i do and and it goes across the board of like you know whether it be uh following the motor gp you know i've mm. been lucky that i've been uh we, we saw uh, years ago the catalonia leg and the Magello leg you know and and i've seen like you know my hero was a valentino rossi race and it also goes to uh you know dirt bikes and enduros as well uh locally mm. where i live i've been able to go and watch just the local boys you know and I say just just the local boys, and that's not a negative, because they are they are incredibly talented, you know, yeah. in the in the local hare and hounds and enduro races. It, it, if it's a race, I'm there. They're, I'm very competitive, and there's something about riding for for glory, you know, not just for enjoyment, but just yeah, yeah. just excites me completely. I, I get absolutely buzzing for it. Um, so yeah, it's uh, I I'd be very lucky that I've had a positive influence in my life like my pop was, um, and I'm 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 grateful he introduced me to bikes. So if Mega. I can be half a biker he is, uh, he was, then uh, I'm alright. <laughs> Mega, do you ever fancy doing a bit of the racing yourself? Of course I do. <laughs> <laughs> I am, Stupid I'm question. Like, I sit on it and I'm like, yeah. I reckon I'm good enough. I'm so fueled by ego, it's unbelievable. And when it boils down to it, the skill that you, you know, that, that, um, and uh, funny enough, I was, I won't say where I was actually, but I was out walking somewhere and I was watching a little dude on, on his little uh, bike and just the, the raw talent that, mm. and the skills that, that people possess just to race. You know, it's it's a whole different ball game, isn't it? You know, I know you're Nuts. riding for pleasure and just going out there and riding, <clears throat> and then riding for for wins for racing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've got so much respect for people who do it. And yes, if if I had my youth again, uh, I, I, you know, I would definitely have tried to get into it uh, and have become a racer because I'm obsessed with that that feeling. What it must be like for them, it's amazing. But the, like you said, though, they're, they're almost like a different breed. You know, like the top okay. flight, not even mm. top flight racers, but anyone that does reasonably well racing, they're just yeah. a different breed. I used to, yeah. 
Like back in the day, I used to consider myself reasonably quick on the road. And one of my mates is a, is a chap called Bob Collins. I don't know if you've, you've ever heard of him. He's he's quite well known in the in the in the sort of bike industry. Owns FWR tires, and and Bob sort of raced professionally. A few things happened in his career that lent him down a different path. But he entered the TT. And Bob was the fastest bloke I've ever, you know, the fastest bloke I know on a bike. Just insane quick. He entered the TT and he was literally like at the bottom of that rung. And it, it, <laughs> even he was saying, these lads are just a different breed. This this the step up once you get to like the like road racing yeah. at the TT. It's, just, it's phenomenal. I don't, I don't even know. I don't know whether that's something that's just, whether it is learned or whether it is just, like almost like a genetic thing like yeah. I, I, I can't comprehend like it's that question it is like what is it that actually makes a winner because it is something completely out of this world when mm. you you know uh, i i debate it all the time like what really makes a winner mm. you know whether it is just something that you it just is it just is you know or whether it is something that you can actually learn and work on i'm more on the on the i just think it's in you. It's something that is just innate, and it's in you. And if you're, you know, do you know what I mean? It's uh, no, no, any, totally. Anyone yeah. can, I can learn the skills, can be learned, but... if I'm honest, uh, I think uh, anyone yeah. can learn the skills given the time and the right instructor. I think it comes down to whether you've got the bottle to yeah. push it to the edge. Oh, I certainly. That's what they do, isn't it? I it's, don't. Yeah. They don't even. I don't even think it's thinking. I think it's almost like breathing. It's just an innate, natural. Uh, thing I think to be to be a successful mm. winner and and not even like you say Bruce not even at like top level like uh, TT GP you know that level I just think even like the enduro boys that I watch or used to watch at Aberbeek you know mm. the winners of those I'm like Christ you were so fast you weren't even mm. thinking and it, it does become like a heartbeat like a breath you know like a breath like a yeah. natural thing. And when you talk to them, they never ever say, you know, I was just like firing on everything. It was like, wow, they're, they're always saying it was just, it's you just get into this calm mental place yeah. where you just go yeah. through it. Even the TT guys, they're doing 200 yeah. mile an hour down these roads that are like 40 mile an hour speed limits. They're doing 200 mile an hour down it. And they all just say, you just, you just get into that flowing state yeah. of mind. That's, <laughs> you know, why, like, I really, that's why I massively like respect respect the Dakar guys, mm. you know, because yeah. they're doing 100, 110 100 mile an hour, hour yeah. off road. Yeah. And you, you, you can see them and their whole bodies are just kind of absorbing all of this. And, yeah. you know, I know how, well, you know, I know how easy it is off road just to accidentally bin it because you just hit a bit of softer sand. I, I know. Just, they're doing 100 miles an guys. hour. And I, I wind up my father-in-law because uh, he's a massive footy fan and I'm not a massive footy fan at all and uh, this great little video I saw online of this um, I sent it to him which is this Dakar rider who comes off full pelt and you know goes flying rolling head over heels head over heels head over heels you know gets up picks up his bike smacks it with his fist to get the handlebar straight yeah. <laughs> and then one leg jumps over boom he's off again and then it cuts to a, this football player where yeah. another football player Fucking walks next to him and he just drops to the floor when he doesn't <laughs> even get touched. <laughs> it was like this year. Did you see it? Was it Toby Price this year? What, one of them this year, one of the KTM boys, he buckled his wheel and, he's li and, he, and he also crashed. So I think I don't think he broke his jaw, but his, his, his jaw was all split. And he's... Yeah. He's, he's pulled up, I think it was in the Mali class, so no one can help you. And he's literally like kicking... It's when he gets to the end, he's kicking his front wheel to try and straighten it and then takes his helmet off and the doctor that comes round to check everybody is like, oh, God, <laughs> uh, we need to stitch this back together. And then there was, uh, Just a different there was another one it? of them that split the tire. Did you see that? He's, yeah, he's he slit the cable tire. tied it all back together, didn't cable he? Cable tied and gaffer taped his back yeah. wheel together. That was, and that, that, was, that was Toby Price. Toby Price. And he yeah. still came like top five or top six, certainly within the top ten <clears throat> on that stage. Mm. <laughs> Yeah, and it's, incredible. it's like someone's taking an angle grader to the back wheel. It's, it's yeah. also the, the thing that you, when you look at the race times and you look at kind of the independents that kind of enter like, you, you know, your Simon Pavies and things like that, mm. you know, 
and I've ridden with Simon Baby. He's not slow. No. <laughs> I mean, no. you know, I've I've seen him at full kind of battle um, battle riding. It's in, in, insane, you know. But then you look at someone like his time, which is like, oh yeah, I managed to get through the stage in eleven hours. Mm-hmm. And then you look at the guy who won the stage and did it in two. Mm. <laughs> what? <It's> crazy. <laughs> crazy. So I. Sorry to bring this up again, but obviously I've had a little look at the old Atlantic crossing this year, the Talisker thing. And the guys that won it, two guys in a boat, they finished in something like 37 days, new world record. Well, there's still people who are just hitting the the halfway point now, and yet these guys finished, what, eight days ago? And you're just like, that is phenomenal, isn't it? That's (laughs) crazy. I'm Nuts. sorry. Did you say you wanted to, me and you to do this? <laughs> <laughs> well, You're saying I, it's the world record is 31 days. There's, there's people after 30 days who aren't at the halfway mark, and you want you, us to do this? I, I'm. I am not. I am not the type of person that's competitive to that degree that thinks I'm going to win it. I just want to do but it. To I do am. It. <laughs> so if it took me three or four months. I don't, it'll take I don't me three enter four things if I'm not going to win it. <laughs> I would do it. I want to do it solo, but it's just if you do it solo, you can't row all the time, can you? So no. there's going to be times when no one, the boat's not moving, and and that really annoys me. So you're like, okay, do it in twos, and keep it moving. I'm just still so happy that me and Graham are still going to be on land, just supporting you. I'm just really happy yeah. that this is our I, I, row. I reckon we do a motorbike TV uh, boat, and we do an around the UK fours. That's what I think. Uh-uh. Won't see me in it. Bad shoulder. Bad shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> As I said, I, I would genuinely be tempted to train to do the Round the UK one. I would genuinely be tempted to do that. I think that's a commitment, people. I, I think I you've would, heard it here not, now. I would not that's do the first, Atlantic. That's official. Tom, I when does that... commit to not doing the, Olymp- the uh, Atlantic. When does the Around the UK air on Amazon Prime? When does that air? I have no idea. <laughs> it's gonna happen. I don't think it's, it's gonna happen. Don't you know it's gonna happen. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Okay, but you know, Was every it? time I get knackered, I'm just gonna. Go, oh, sorry, Bruce. You'll have to. I, I need to film this. Two hours so, on, two hours you'll off. Have to do all the no rowing, yeah. Two on, two off. No problem. <laughs> Next question, Ashley. Has everyone answered the last question? Can't even remember if everyone. Uh, working life balance. I don't think yeah, Graham I think, did. Oh, I did. Yeah, 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 yeah you did. did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh no, you yeah. did. Yeah, I'm sorry, yeah. I was listening. <laughs> next one Ashley Wright I think we're nearly done the Patreon and then we can move on to Insta Ashley Wright hi everybody really looking forward to the show uh, oh no that is the one we just answered GRS Fleet Graphics looking forward to a decent motorcycle pro- programme on the telly box Hen- oh, can we say this is this slander Henry Cole just doesn't cut it for us modern day mature bikers cheers guys uh, we'll do what we can <laughs> This is what I mean about I don't read pre-read the questions. Yeah. D Simon 9S. Being in the USA, I've never seen any of your episodes. Is there a website or other internet service where I could watch your show, preferably for free? Well, well we're not... I'll tell you this. He hasn't seen it because we haven't made it yet. <laughs> yeah, we, we haven't even filmed it yet. <laughs> but like we said at the start, it will be available on Amazon Prime in the States and the UK. Is that right? Yeah, and Germany. But and just Germany, a bit later in eventually. Germany. But if you go onto the Dunlop website, you I will really be able be, to. Actually, wait a sec. I'm gonna. <laughs> if you got a Dunlop <laughs> cap, a Dunlop T-shirt, Dunlop sunglasses. See, that was that was what I was doing earlier, but I couldn't find my Dunlop stuff. <laughs> that there you go. There I we go. Put that there from the start. <laughs> so anyone that doesn't have Amazon Prime for whatever it's reason. Really... Graham, these are your new ties. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> Lovely. I did one day. You still got some. <laughs> oh. Then, uh, oh, yeah, if you enter the Dunlop website, you'll be able to watch it. little pit bike. <laughs> Next question. Darren Phillips. With the progress... Oh, here we go. I like this one. With the progress of EV motorcycles being fairly slow but steady... Do you see the future of EV motorbikes going to get better with more being similar to the current styles of internal combustion uh, motorbikes and cheaper to buy and insure? So let me reread that again. With the progress of electric motorbikes being fairly slow and steady, do you see the future of electric bikes 
uh, going to get better with more being similar? So do you think electric bikes are going to reach the stage where they're basically comparable to petrol bikes? Cheaper to buy and insure. Go on, Tom. I got my hand up for this one. I am a complete convert to electric power. Me too. Um, not just with motorbikes, cars as well. Um, I've I've got an electric car on order that's going to replace my current car in June. Loaded. Um, Loaded. <laughs> no. <laughs> business lease cars. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's the way to go. Um, <laughs> Um, and I know that, for instance, uh, Sam and Claire, who present our other motorbike show, Adventure Bike TV, with Graham, um, they're they're really into it. They've actually got their own separate business called Volta, which is um, a kind of all about future positive and you know future technologies and stuff like that. Um, and I just think it's one thing that really frustrates me about manufacturers when they're talking about their electric bikes and they're talking about their electric cars is they always always talk about the green credentials Mm -hmm. now and then of course you get all these people going oh well it's not as green as you think it is because think about the carbon footprint of all you know and of course at the moment because they're not because the infrastructure isn't in place to um you know to to make it terribly efficient to make the batteries etc etc but as that as that infrastructure improves then of course you know all of it tends to get a lot better and you tend to find that you know it's better for the environment but i don't understand no petrol head has ever gone ah i will buy this bike or buy this car because it's good for the environment Hmm. they have an amazing ability in terms of speed and performance and they need to talk about that more i mean i I'll give you an example because it's more from the car world because I think the car world is very much leading the ch- you know leading the race yeah. in terms of electric vehicles. But do you know what the fastest? Well, I'll just tell you the fastest accelerating 0 to 60 car at the moment is the Dodge uh, Charger Demon Demon version. To get the fastest 0 to 60 time, you have to change its front tyres and its rear tyres, and they're no longer road legal, and put a special additive in the car, <laughs> and then it will do the fastest time. The third, and I think that car is around 200, 300,000, that kind of price range. The third fastest 0 to 60 time is the Bugatti Chiron, which I think is a 2.5 million pound car kind of thing. Yep. Second is the uh, Tesla Model S Plaid Edition. And it's £100,000. Mm-hmm. You're going a car that can out-accelerate a £2.5 million, million pound car for £100,000. £100,000 is obviously a huge amount of money. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But when you think about actually money for performance, that's incredibly good value. Mm-hmm. You know, you can't get anything else that will get even close to that for that kind of price. Yeah. Not even close. You yeah. know, and I think the same thing is happening with motorbikes now. We're starting to get these bikes in and there there are some things that you know the thing that everyone's always going to talk about is range. You know, they they don't have the range yet, but the technologies are improving all the time and dramatically quickly. Um, you know, and there are lots of different um, you know, for instance, Super Soco, I think is a great little company at the moment. They've got a range of bikes and these, you know, they're kind of 60 65 city miles an bikes, hour you yeah, know yeah. then mm. yeah they're city bikes but they are four thousand pounds you know i think for their top of the range super soco tc max and i love it i think it's a great looking bike it has um i think it's that one that you know you can quite easily change the battery if you need to so you can just block the battery out put another one in mm. you know and it's and it still accelerates brilliantly you know mm. you, you know and then you get things like obviously the the harley davidson live wire uh, which i know bruce you've ridden and absolutely yeah yeah. Mm. yeah and i, I yeah. just think it the, the caught me by surprise that bike it yeah. caught me by surprise i didn't with with the whole long way up and all the furor that went with it i just thought harley make an electric bike it's not going to live up to the hype and it and it genuinely does it genuinely competes with your zeros and your energicas in almost every way it's 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 a great bike 
Oh, you're right. Have you gone? Sorry, I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, yeah, yeah, I, at, the mo- at the moment, I've only ever ridden two electric bikes. One was many years ago when they were first coming out, well, about nine years ago on, on a track, and it, and it was okay. And the other one was um, a, a KTM um, Enduro. Freeride E. Uh, yeah, the Freeride E, which was amazing uh, as an Enduro bike. I, I, I loved it. I didn't mm. feel any less fun than than riding a petrol bike. Although it, the, I, I did miss the sound. Yeah. Um, and, I, and I think Tom's absolutely right. I think the, uh, yeah, the, the cars are probably five years ahead of the bikes maybe even 10 years, I don't know. But that, that time will kind of come down because the bike's got a long way to catch up because the moment, you know, even the live wire in decent conditions, what's the range? 100 miles, 120 miles? So, realistically, I, I had it and I rode it exactly the way I ride on a, a petrol bike and I was getting about 100 miles to it. Yeah. I, and, well, when I say exactly... When I got to about 60% use of the battery, I was like, mm. it was motorway. Motorways absolutely rinse the battery. Mm. Rinse it, if, which is why the electric makes sense in towns. If you can sit in towns, you can get energy because the zeros, they will do two to 400 miles on, or sorry, two to 400 kilometers on one charge if you're in the town. So if you just stop, start, stop, start, stop, start, great, perfect. Once you get out to anywhere where you have to maintain anything above, depending on what you're on, anywhere from sort of 55 to 65 mile an hour, anything above that where you're maintaining that speed, the the, the battery just goes, whoop, literally just hammers it. That, that, that will get a lot better. And Absolutely. I think it will get a lot yeah. better reasonably quickly Yeah, because they'll, they'll, they'll just be playing catch up with the cars. But it's different though, because cars have got all that real estate to put the battery in, mm. whereas bikes mm. are limited by the, the physical size. Mm. So it's almost battery, like it's... The battery technologies are improving... They are. Unbelievably quickly. They are, I mean, but 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 electric ba- batteries for a bike have to be different to a car mm. because you cannot... Mm. You just physically can't get the real estate, the size, the, the volume of battery into a bike that you can into a car. But so then realistically, want... a bike has never had the range of a car anyway. No, that's a good point, mate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've said that to people. Uh-huh. Like, I've had people away on tours with me on on MT tens, Aprilia Tuonos. Well, if you're spanking it on an MT ten or spanking it on a, a, a Tuono, your range can be as little as eighty, eighty five miles. Mm-hmm. So that's comparable with an electric bike that'll do eighty to hundred. The difference is. With the internal combustion, you turn up at a petrol station. Five minutes later, you've got a full tank and off you go. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Electric, you're looking at these days anywhere from 20 to 40 to three or four hours, depending on what charge you use. That's the I difference. Pers- I personally, I think that's what needs to change more mm. than more than how much how, the range of the of the bikes. It's the ability to be able to fast charge and you know fast charge really quickly. I think mm. that that's almost more important than the batteries themselves. It's how quickly they can charge. As you can I, tell, I'm quite passionate about this. And no, no, fair, we, we will be doing a lot. Okay. We will be including. So we're doing some electric stuff in Adventure Bike TV, and we've got an episode dedicated to electric bikes. Yeah. Uh, on on motorbike TV, so we will be covering it in detail. Good, awesome. I, I'm I'm the same. I I don't think electric is the answer to all the ecological issues, not not at all, but it's happening. There's nothing we can do about this. It's coming. It will definitely come. And I, I almost think you have to change your mentality around. You, you can't expect. Certainly, I would think in our immediate lifetimes, you cannot expect to just rock up on an electric bike, top up the battery, and carry on your journey. You just have to, you have to accept it's going to take a little bit longer. Hopefully it won't be 40 minutes, two hours, four hours. If we can get it to 20 minutes or sub half hour, anyone can knob and waste for half an hour, can't you? While, whilst it recharges. It's interesting. When we were, when we, when Graham interviewed Charlie, um, Mm. recently, um, one thing he was saying is, is it's, it's more about how you charge the bike. Um, and his analogy, which I thought was really good, is it's like filling a glass of water. 
you can chuck loads of water in very quick, but when you get towards the thing, you have to yeah. slow it down and things like yeah, that. That's the last so bit, actually, isn't it? You can actually get an 80% charge in a pretty short amount of time. Yeah. Yeah. Which then allows really? you to go another 40, 50 miles. Mm. So yeah. you just keep doing those small increments, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll yeah. see, because so I think, I think yeah. in our lifetimes it's going to happen. So. I, I think I think within the next ten years it will mm. be you know it'll be most most new bikes will be yeah. on the electric side of things. Yeah, it's interesting because you see, have you noticed a lot of the big bike manufacturers now, and I include BMW in this. I spoke to BMW a couple of years about electric bikes, and they almost poo pooed it. They were just like, "That's not our target audience." They are starting to push electrics with the scooters, and they're all bringing out electric push bikes. Which yeah. is just the See, first that, step. That's that's, to the next. Sne- that's sneaky though, because there's there's a new I can't remember if it's a yep. law or a, a that you have that to. Ev- everyone has to have an electric bike mm. in their range, yeah. and yeah. so if if they're not bringing out electric scooters, they're kind of going, oh well, we've got round it, you know. Yeah, and exactly. suddenly you look on Ducati's homepage, and with all these like Ducati monsters and stuff like that, you randomly have an a, a, a an electric assist mountain bike, and mm. it has to be in their main range, yeah, yeah. you know, and it's. You know, it's it's obviously a little loophole which they won't be able to use forever. But it's it's a it's it's just it's just marketing, and isn't, isn't it? It's acclimatizing us to being to getting used to that brand having electric, so that it's not such a massive yeah. kick to the nuts when it is electric. You know, when they start giving you putting electric bikes in front of you, you don't go, oh, oh that's not Ducati. I can't have that. It's just getting everyone used to electric to the point where it. Where that is the mainstream. You're always going to have petrol. There'll always be petrol. In our lifetimes, there will always be petrol bikes. But Mm. I think the mainstream over the next 10, 15, well, 5 to 15, it'll move to electric. I can see that happening. Definitely. Anyway, that's probably half the podcast disappeared now. (laughs) When I do an electric vid, oh my God, the comments. Jeez. (laughs) Nothing, Next. nothing divides opinion, I don't think, like electric bikes. Absolutely, yeah, yeah, T- totally. I mean, people are very passionate either way, and then you have those in the middle, but wow, yeah, it, it certainly <laughs> gets the uh, conversation going. N- Next one, my mate, Mark Fulcher. How you doing, Fulch? Uh, evening, me ducks. My if you could be a motorbike for the day, whose motorbike would you be? So yes. that's all in. Any generation, any bike, any owner, any scenario, but whose bike would it be and why? Good luck with the new venture. Really looking forward to it. So whose bike whose bike would we like to own? No, would you be? So I'd actually be a bike. Someone would ride me. Yeah. <laughs> Steve McQueen. I'm just putting out there, Steve McQueen. Coolest guy on the planet. Steve McQueen. Oh, I want to be that triumph. Christy, go on. I want to be Tom Hardy's, and I really don't care what bike it is. <laughs> as soon as as soon as I said Steve McQueen, I thought everyone's going to think I'm going to want to be ridden by Steve McQueen. But I just think the bloke's the coolest bloke ever. But well, I understand yeah. what you're saying. I understand well, what you're saying. He rides motorbikes. He rides. Uh, he gets to ride an abundance of different motorbikes. I really do not give a shit which one that is. I'm, I'm whichever one he wants to be. Is he a biker? I didn't know he was a biker. Yeah. 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 Is he? It makes him even more. It makes him even more the perfect man. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Goom. What was that? Thanks, what Mark, you were you're saying? Watching. <laughs> Oh, he's uh, where, where was it we interviewed um, Charlie? Tom? The, bike, uh, shed. bike Shed. Bike yeah, shed. Bike Shed. Yeah, so Tom Hardy's, well, I mean, Bike Shed's got, got many, many, many investors, but many, most of whom want to stay sort of silent in the background. But Tom Hardy's one of the ones who is, a, is openly an investor in the Bike Shed in London. Is he? I didn't, yeah. I didn't know that. I didn't even know he was a biker. Yeah. I yeah. love Tom. <laughs> <laughs> they are Tom. You got a fan. Do you love Tom Hardy? Do you love Tom Hardy? Do you really? No, I, I didn't say a word then. I don't know what happened. I'm oh, sorry. I've been I've been miles away wondering whether Mila Kunis rides motorbikes. Oh God! I yeah. Think, I think she would. I think she. I think she does. Does, I, I does Catherine that, I Jenkins I, ride a motorbike? I think I'd be Mila Kunis's motorbike. That'd be great. Thanks. <laughs> 
we could take this down a totally different avenue. I, I'm wondering if that really what he was expecting to get from the question. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Fulch is a proper deviant. Yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely. In fact, this is probably quite tame for what he was expecting. <laughs> Graham, what about you, bud? Uh, I, th I think this is the first question of the evening. I, I, I don't know the answer to this one. Tom Hardy? <laughs> I, I, I get it, but not for me. <laughs> 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 um, oh, guys, my, my beautiful assistant has just brought me a top up and some pizza. Fantastic. Mm. Oh, that's a point. Wow. How is everybody oh, for time? Tom, how jealous of you for Friday pizza? Hey, buddy, as soon as I get Hello. on the business, hey, um, How are you? Hello. Hi. Who's going to be doing a CBT this year? Fantastic. Yay. Welcome. Welcome to the family. Yeah, Tom's going to find sponsorship for me. <laughs> That's a feature, Tom. That's a feature. Everyone's always interested to know how you get into biking. There you go. <laughs> I don't need another I don't need another Christy who's just on the phone Tom get me this get me this Tom I want some new clothing Tom get me a bike on loan Tom get me this I've never said that in my life I don't know what you're talking about Tom Tom please get me a, a triumph a trident please Tom please <laughs> I've Christy I've managed to get you a triumph trident on long term loan there you go you've got it great Tom <laughs> Can I have some clothing now, please? <laughs> yes, Chrissy, what clothing would you no. like? I really no, no, like no, no, a cherry no. helmet. I'll see what I can do. <laughs> no, let's be honest. All right, if you're going to be like that, if you're going to play that card, I'm going to be completely honest. Domestic. What, what, what did I say I wanted? What T-shirt did I want specifically? It was nothing but NBTV. I, that's teapot one, teapot one T-shirt. <laughs> I can get you a teapot oh, yeah, one T-shirt. <laughs> but you know, um, let's let's be real about it. All I said was, "Are we going to have NBTV T-shirts that I can wear?" Because you know, I'm a sucker for a T-shirt. I sent you an email about that, Tom. I don't know if um, if you've got that, but I sent you an email I, about I it. I did, yeah. I, I um, I have had a windswept and interesting revelation about this question: whose bike I'd want to be. Hmm. And I might change my answer if I can. Go on, Depends on what it's too. If it's Ted not Simon's bike. Let you. Ted Simon. Mm. The, Ooh, I mean, just some like stuff, isn't it? the overly the overlord legend of of motorcycle overlanding. Ted Simon's bike led the way for for everybody. Mm. Ted that's Simon's bike. That's a good bike. change. That's yeah. that's a good switch. I feel like I'm I've 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 gone another rung. I've gone one rung. Up there, rather than down there. So, Ted Simon's bike. See, but now, now we all feel like we have to give sensible answers. No, 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 no. It's done. It's done. Answer. It's done. <laughs> I don't want to give a sensible. I, I have no other answer. <laughs> Tom Hardy is yours. Done. Next one. Tractor Paul. Evening, everyone. Got to ask, how many hours per episode have you set aside for Bruce's makeup? Prick. Which bikes do you all own? Really looking forward to watching the show. Good luck, everyone. So what bikes does everybody own? Excuse me, pardon. I've got a um, GS, best bike in the world, and a Jix 1000. I currently... Um, I currently only own one bike, uh, mm -hmm. which is a little 125 um, Herald Maverick um, on the last series of Adventure Bike TV. Um, we, did, we, we always do a Tales and Trails where we go off riding. Look at Graham eating his pizza. I hate you. <laughs> I'm sorry. Munch your way, mate. Munch your um, way. And uh, I just loved it. I mean, it, we, we were doing all this off-road stuff, and it was just light and fun and great to ride. And, you know, we weren't doing anything super fast and things. And we got back to the end of the trip. Uh, I was so in love with it. I phoned, I phoned, um, phoned them and bought it off them. <laughs> Did you? Um, One, so, two, fives are such a giggle, man, aren't they? They're yeah. such fun. Brilliant. Yeah. And I mean, I, I've in the past, I've owned. I had a, I had a gorgeous Triumph Tiger uh, 800 XC, which we rallied up, um, and it's been up to Nord Cap, and we've done the Stella Alpina on it, and all sorts of things. And then I, I was actually in South America now with a guy who's, I think, he's just clocked over two hundred thousand miles on it. Wow. 
Wow. Uh, and it's uh, as far as I know, apart from like full on servicing and stuff like that, the only thing that's broken on it was this spring for the uh, side stand. Uh, it's an amazing God. piece of kit. Um, but I'm quite fortunate um, that essentially, if I ever need a bike for something, I can usually borrow one. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's kind of and 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 because of what we do any bike i own because i don't get much time to ride anyway and when i do it tends to be stuff for the shows you know and at which point we tend to be using bikes we're borrowing anyway it it's it, it would just sit in my garage not doing anything at the mm. moment so yeah, yeah I know. you know i mean yeah the the herald has kind of sentimental value and i i just love it to bits which is you know why i why i have that but at the moment i don't i don't own one and i kind of miss owning one but it doesn't really make sense Christy, what about you? At the moment, I share with my husband a GSX-R750. Mm. Um, nice. Mainly because, obviously, when the kids come along, you know, I got rid of my, my bike, which was a 400 Bandit. Uh, and I love the Bandit as well. I mean, it, it, it really got me... Um, sort of uh my, my favorite bikes are naked bikes anyway i just love that that street performance bike that naked look so the band it, it was just it was just a really cool little bike just uh you know it's get great fun isn't it, it. great I, fun I, I i loved it and i i found it um you know considering the age of the bike uh when i rode it you know it was it was i i just find it really responsive like the clutch was like really nice and light on it and it was it was just a good bike to have the bandit mm-hmm. um but now at the moment we share the gsxr 750 um and i find i gotta be honest i find that i find the gsxr is quite gnarly i i yeah. they are they're fun they are fun um and also as touched upon earlier by Tom, you know, I do have a little bit of a, a dick about on uh, a little pit bike that I've got. <laughs> and some Which I constantly bikes. take the mick out before. Yeah, <laughs> and some dirt bikes that I get out on. But i got to be honest, you know, I love riding the dirt as well. Um, so, yeah, that's my bikes at the moment. Uh, but obviously, uh, within this past sort of year and a half, two years, getting back on it, I'm really looking forward to getting on some other bikes for sure. Nice. Nice. And I'll just leave it at that. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. Graham, what about yourself? Uh, I have a 1997 Fireblade, um, which I've had since 1998. Wow. um, Which I had to put on some comfort handlebars because it was hurting my back too much to ride it with the standard handlebars. (laughs) I'm slightly ashamed to say. <laughs> um, but you know what? It's done 50,000 miles. I've toured on it. I've commuted on it. I've scratched on it-ish. Uh, and it's it's still on the original clutch. No, it just... Is it? It, it is utterly nice. bulletproof, that bike. Wow. Yeah. Amazing. Honda, man. Honda. Yeah. yeah. They'll uh, always I, actually, I, actually, I actually had the, um, the Honda... Uh, technician, the guy who looks at, uh, oh, and this was 10 years ago, but he looked after Honda HQ um, or whatever bikes or the press fleet. Yeah. So he was the guy when, um, if, a, if a dealer couldn't fix a bike, he was the one they went to because he just knew everything about the bikes, like the top technician. And he was dropping off, in fact, it was the bikes that Danny and I used to go around the med when we did our uh, Madden med trip. Uh, and he saw, the, he saw the fire blade and he went, you know what, he said, he said that particular year, is the only engine I've not managed to break. Wow. The RV. So there you wow. go. So that, I've got that. Uh, I've got my BMW S1000 XR, um, which is what they call it, a sports adventure bike. Mm-hmm. It's, it's a sports bike with adventure styling. Yep. Yeah. Yep. It is. And it's a, an astonishing bike to ride. Um, and I've just sold my 690 KTM 690 Enduro, but I'm going to oh, yeah. replace it. I'm going to go back to an EXC 500 for green laning. So, nice. um, kind of a bike for all occasions. Um, That's a nice stable you've got going on there. Lovely. It's very nice. I, I'm, nice I'm a very lucky boy. I'm a very lucky boy. Happy days. Yeah. How is everybody for time? That's been two and a quarter hours, believe it or not. I'm good. Wow. Everyone all right for time? I'm just, I'm just running out of beers. I reckon we've okay. probably got we've got about another twenty minutes, half hour of questions, yeah. if that's okay for yeah, everyone. Right. So, right. 
Yeah, yeah, no problem. No worries. Do um, the do worst people thing want... is right when we finish this call, I get to have pizza. So I know Graham is now going to sit there and just make this go on as long as possible yeah, while know, yeah. eating pizza. <laughs> <laughs> it's got me hungry, I tell you. Um, does anyone need a, a, a bathroom break? I'm going to pop for a pee. Does anyone else need to go? I uh, set take... off earlier. Oh, did... Is that where you went earlier? I actually well, do... might sneak off for a pee as well. I'll, disapp- I'll disappear for five. I'll be back, right? <laughs> He's back, shush. Hi, shush I'm back. Shush. He's back. Shush, everyone. Shush. Depending on what you've just said, I'll either include that or delete it, one or the other. I delete it. Are you all right just to crack on? I need to just be Christy just going, I'm on my sixth bear. (laughs) (laughs) Good effort. Good effort. Right, next question. Brian McManus. Hi to you all and hope you're all well. To you all, what's the biggest opportunity that slipped through your fingers and do you think it was for the best? Ooh. Ooh. Wow, that's a good one. Biggest opportunity. Is this, that is this biking related or are we just going life? I think go life. Let's go big. I got one if other people are still thinking. Yeah, crack on, mate. Um, I used to do huge amounts of sailing. Huge amounts of sailing. Um, I was laser 3000 national champion back in the day. Uh, I had a world ranking of 46 at one point um in my kind of 18 19 year old um i was very lucky i went to a school that had lots of sailing uh and i had team trials for the catamaran class uh with a friend of mine who michael john ball and uh, name drop basically name drop drop. uh we basically had a a a four-day event five-day event um, and how long did that take? Within, what five day event? <laughs> <laughs> Weirdly, <laughs> and and so uh, basically, it was two man, uh, two man catamaran. We were sailing, um, and we managed to massively, massively damage it on the second day, uh, uh, where we were in second place overall. And I think the top five got into the Olympic squad, um, and we really damaged the boat and couldn't. Yeah, couldn't carry on um and we ended up coming sixth or seventh just outside yeah. the thing um and had we not i'm pretty sure we could have held on to at least top three uh and i would have joined the british olympic team and i would have gone off and done like the olympics and yeah the 20 2004 olympics would have been my first olympics um and, you know, obviously it didn't happen. And then my course of life completely changed. So, mm-hmm. um, and it's not, I wouldn't say it's a regret in any way, shape or form, because I wouldn't have met my wife. I wouldn't have had my kids. I probably wouldn't have got into motorcycling um, or done any of this. Um, oh, you, probably, you, you'd, you'd, have, you'd have been a hugely famous Olympian. Yeah, exactly. I'd just be an Olympian, you know, probably <laughs> racing with Ben Ainsley in America's Cup. Exactly, right now. Yeah. So, you know. <laughs> But he'd never heard of Ben Ainsley. It'd have been Tom Woodrow. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, yeah. All's well that ends well, Tom. That's the kind of yeah. It's not. It's not a regret. It's just one of things that happens. But it's certainly a point where my life veered completely off trail and went a different way. So, is this you trying to get out of the Atlantic Row with me? Is that? Is this no, what I'm just this wondering whether I can sail it instead. Can I sail <laughs> it instead? You know. <laughs> what about you, Graham? Biggest opportunity uh, that slipped away. Let me just bring it back down to you know, an appropriate <laughs> level. So when I, was 20, when I was 22, I got a job offer to go and be in a, um, a male escort in Florida. Seriously? Oh. Yeah. So, Is that on LinkedIn? Uh, Where'd you get these opportunities? <laughs> Hi, sponsors. How are you? <laughs> now, I'm not Another saying it really changed the course of my life, you know, but wow. it would have been an experience. So... Graham, what circles did you mix in where that opportunity arose? <laughs> Weirdly, it was a guy I was working with in Dixon's, if you can remember the Dixon stores. He, yeah. Uh, he, he, he was, he was a, a male escort. And wow. um, he, he was just doing a summer job over here. And he was going, no, no, sorry, he was a Christmas job over here. And he was going to go back to Florida. And I, and I talked to him about it. And I spoke to the, 
the, the, the agency, they walked, worked from the States and we were going to go back to States and work over there. Wow. Can wow. I just say, I've known Graham a long, long time. Not only is that the first time I've ever heard that story, <laughs> but also I know full well that he has some of the most inspiring stories I've ever heard. Yeah, he chose to tell that one. <laughs> and he's just shared that with 70,000 people. <laughs> what? Sure. <laughs> oh. Oh. Well, yeah, yeah, well, maybe there's a clarification over what he meant by male escort. You know, he was a, as in, you know, Just talk with these ladies and people that wanted the, company. The posh Englishman on the arm of a very wealthy American lady. Of, of a, course, that's all they were looking that's for a male escort to do, obviously. Exactly. Mm. On the arm of probably like a seventy-year-old <laughs> lady in Florida. <laughs> wow, I've never been more well, not of the seventy-year-old, but I've never been more envious, Graham. Wow, <laughs> wow. I but, but I didn't go, so you know, you, you look back and you think, hmm, missed opportunity. There yeah. are so many people throwing things at their screen and their phones <laughs> and everything as we speak. <laughs> Christy, oh, can you live being up to that? Handsome, isn't it, Ross Graham? <laughs> <laughs> Christy, over to you. Biggest missed opportunity. Well, when I was about, um, I think I was about five, something like that. Uh, we were on holiday. Uh, my parents, myself, and my sister. And even though me and my sister aren't twins, my mum went through that phase of just dressing us like we were twins so we we did look kind of identical and we were apparently approached by um an austrian heiress on the beach who absolutely fell in love with uh, myself and my sister i'm assuming you know she may not have a family or able to have children of her own and um yeah, um, I think she did kind of offer to inherit us. <laughs> so I could wow. be of Austrian royalty heiressing it up right now in Austria. Um, but my You've never forgiven your mum and dad since? <laughs> <laughs> how dare they? How dare they? Yeah, I'm so annoyed at her right now. How much, how much did they offer your parents? Do you know what? You know what? She's like never actually deal. said, so I don't think it was much, and I think she considered it, so maybe that's why she didn't <laughs> Slab of dairy say. milk. Yeah, <laughs> but apparently, as a child, I was a dream, but she does always say that if she'd had offered it me as a teenager, I would have been long gone because <laughs> I was an arsehole. <laughs> <laughs> so, Next yeah, that's one. one one missed opportunity, and the other more oh, down-to-earth one was that um, I did have the opportunity to go to uh, stage school um, and kind of pursue uh, acting at an earlier age that way, uh, mm. but I, I didn't um, I didn't choose that option. But I've kind of worked my way around and ended up that way anyway, so I'm, I'm a big believer in life works out. Absolutely. What's meant to be is meant to be, isn't it? What's yeah, meant for you I won't believe. go by you. Well, Except it could be in Austria, rich by now. But, yeah. <laughs> Not having to how worry you, about anything, yeah. How about you, Bruce? Oh, blimey. Uh, cool. I think since since about my mid... Certainly since my 30s, I've tended just to go for it. But I think before that, uh, my rugby days, I, I used to be... right. Rugby was life. I just... All I wanted to do was was play for Scotland. So all through my teens and right up to I think nineteen twenty, I, I trialed for Scotland when I was nineteen twenty. I trialed with with Jason White, who became Scotland captain and British Lions captain. Well, we both trialed for Scotland at the same time, and he got it, and I didn't. Mm. And then I sort of fell into. I was working the door. I was at uni. I was working the doors. I just sort of fell into the beer and women and uh, <laughs> forget forget rugby after that. So I then watched Jason disappear off into Scotland and Scotland captain and British Lions and I became a dad and, <laughs> you know, what, what didn't do particularly. Play, Bruce? Second row number eight. I was second row originally and then um, through the like, district and stuff, they were looking for me to go to number eight and for Scotland would be number eight and all that sort of stuff. So, yeah, I, I kind of, 
I kind of. I mean, it was forward a row. <laughs> well, yeah, I did. I played. I played front row at school, but you know, at fourteen yeah. years of age, I was six foot three and seventeen stone. So it was kind of. I was the scrum. So. <laughs> wow. I've, I've basically That's where been. I would have put you anyway. <laughs> see now, yeah, but like in the in the early nineties, front rows weren't front rows weren't six foot plus. They were they were short. Stocky Stockier, lads. Yeah. So I was a second row, whereas now I'm I'm a midget for a second row now. So but, <laughs> when did you stop growing? <laughs> about about eleven, twelve. I, I, I was I was like I was like six foot three when I started the secondary school. So it was, <laughs> and seventeen stone, and I just sort of stayed there till my thirties, and then I went up to about twenty stone, and I've sat there ever since. <laughs> so yeah, I think that's that's about it really. Since Certainly, since my thirties, I've I've just sort of gone for it. If an opportunity's there, let's let's have it. Let's go for it. <laughs> Next one, Andy Bowen, motorbike tourer. Are there going to be any touring bits on the show? But on bikes, not just touring bikes. Most people have, but uh, but but any kind of bikes. Personally, I love nakeds, and I'm happy to tour on them. Are we going to do any touringy type stuff, Tom? There. Let me look at my board. <laughs> <laughs> Um, <laughs> the reason is we Adventure Bike TV is coming out in April, so no. that's that's a much fuller board that I'm concentrating on at the moment. Um, we we are going to be doing some touring uh, a bit. Certainly, um, what we want to do is some electric bike system touring uh, to really get to grips with. You know what it's really like to try and do some long distances on electric bikes when you have to stop and charge and things mm. like that and try and go to places that when maybe chargers aren't you know there might be one charger and three bikes what do you do you know <laughs> that kind of thing um we talk to your rules <clears throat> <laughs> no, that's, that's, that's graham lives by that top gear rules. <laughs> <laughs> um I mean, we we do a fair bit of touring on the on Adventure Bike TV. So you know, uh, certainly we're doing uh, some kind of twenty four hour adventure tours. You know, which on that show, which is going to have um, everything from kind of adventuring on a gold wing to you know adventuring on a little kind of um, three hundred cc um, Honda CRF. You know, that kind of thing. Uh, mm. So it's there. It, there's not a huge amount of it, but there will be, there will be some, you know, and, you know, we, it's the first season of this show, you know, we probably won't get it perfect first, first round, you know, it's, it's like, like any TV series like that, you know, you can get, we, we go for what we think is going to be the best show and we'll always find some bits that work better than others, you know, yeah. and other bits that, you know, Maybe we see a lot of people saying we wish we'd seen that, and we start to bring it in, and it's it's a constantly evolving thing, uh, a show like this. So the key point of that, folks, is let us know what you think when it comes out. Yeah. Tell, I'm sure you will. I'm sure we don't need to ask. Oh, but, oh, uh, people always. Do. Oh yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> it's the it is the greatest and the worst part of any sort of. Well, for me, social presence. That is the I love the interaction and I fucking hate the interaction. But it's just part and parcel, isn't it? You've got to take the good I, I have had I have genuinely had people who say they think I make the best videos ever. And I've genuinely had people send me death threats. <laughs> oh yeah. So yeah. It's awesome, so, isn't yeah. it? <laughs> yeah, it's great fun. <laughs> but all I we're just... trying to do is make a show essentially that my my guiding thing has always been i will i will make a show that i would sit down and watch perfect that, you know <laughs> sounds good to I'm me doing. yeah I've just read the next one, and uh, Matt price, you are a legend with Bruce taking the part of the sexy one in the show <laughs> what change. roles yeah what roles did Graham and Christy see themselves fulfilling mother. Mother. Clearly. Really? Nah. <laughs> no. I'm awful no. at that. Uh, I'd say I'm, I'm the broken one. Broken? Why is that? <laughs> I'm struggling to think of a, of, a, of a joint in my body that isn't broken mm. or damaged in some way. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm the booze. broken one. 
I'll be the rookie. <laughs> I'm sitting here and going, if I had to assign one of the Top Gear presenters to you guys, which one would be which? Oh, yeah, go on. That's yeah, a nice, that's that. a good avenue. Go down that. Do which that. ones? What, Clarkson, on, May, and, and the Hamster? Or the new Top I think, Gear? I, I, no, old school. Yeah, I get I asked that Christy, all the time. Christy would be Hamster. Yeah! Richard Hammond. So it's now down to who thinks they're going to be the boring one, the James May. <laughs> um, it's very difficult, actually. I, or I, I, who's I think, the bullshit think, artist? Tom, yeah. think, Tom, consider your words carefully. Yeah, I know. To be honest, <laughs> I... I no, really, really, think about this very carefully. <laughs> oh, look, my video stopped working. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, 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 I'm gone, sorry, no, it's not working. <laughs> <laughs> Back. <laughs> this, is, this is where Graham's like, remember, I'm an executive producer on the yeah, show. No, yeah. <laughs> I'll, um, I'll, whatever one you don't want to be, Graham, that's me. I, I would, I would, I would probably say you're both Clarkson. I don't think there is a there is a James May to be honest. If, if there was, it would probably be me. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Avoided that one. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yeah. Well you should be a politician. <laughs> uh, right, next one. Jay Alexander. It's starting to feel like there's no end in sight. I was supposed to do an American road trip this year. Guess that'll get pushed back to next year. The weather doesn't help. Uh, well, that. Oh, sorry, it's not a question. He's just having a moan. Well, that's my moan. Over. <laughs> sorry, Jay. Sorry, mate. But we're all in the same boat, pal. So things yeah. will change. Don't worry about that. Keep smiling. And if you want to, you can go watch Adventure by TV on Amazon Prime. There's loads of special, nice ways to live by live vicariously through us. <laughs> Absolutely, yes. Get yourself ready for when freedom returns. Uh, another one, Joe Hicks. Good luck. Good luck. Uh, really looking forward to the TV series. Cheers, Joe. Stephen Alex. Really looking forward to the show. I'm sorry, I haven't read this. Bruce is perfect for this. Good luck. Thank you very much, Stephen Alex. I do appreciate that. Oh, right, that... he hasn't read any of these. I, I hadn't. I promise you, I hadn't. Oh, by the way, Bruce, I haven't read this. Let me just read some of my comments. Tom is the best filmmaker I've ever seen. I hadn't read that beforehand. I didn't mean to, so. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, right, let's move over on to... Are you okay for time? Is everyone okay for time? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Cool. My my we... pizza's on the way. My wife has been instructed to bring it in when it arrives. <laughs> we're gonna hit, we're gonna hit three hours. Good God, it's two and a half at the moment. I think the problem you've got is normally you only have one person to answer the questions. <laughs> now you have to do three for, <laughs> three know. answers for each. <laughs> it's been good though. It's been a giggle. Right, so we move over to Instagram. Uh, for me, that's at teapot one insta, and I'll put everyone else's uh, insta accounts in the podcast description and in the vid description. So check down there. Make sure you follow us subscribe, like, etc, etc, to everybody. So first one we've got here is official Mr. Fish. How are you doing, John? Not a question, just a good luck. Looks like a great lineup. and Bruce. Well, thanks. Thanks very much. Cheers, John. <laughs> Wish you guys success and fun times. Uh, next one. Oh, somebody called Christy Axe. <laughs> I know that name. <laughs> got to be in there. You got to be in there. Uh, Sparrow four nine nine four. Looking forward to the new venture. Will there be any regular six uh, sections? For example, riding roads of the UK, a section about good old bikes, and not just like the other programs who just concentrate on the oh, oh oops, <laughs> not not just like the other car programs who concentrate on the out of reach for the majority expensive cars. Well, I think we've we've already addressed that, haven't we? <laughs> yeah, you're not going to like the show. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but you did say there's going to be a bit of a mix, isn't there? We're going to go for the yeah. extravagant, and then we're also going to do other little options. On there, every there, is, there is method to the madness. I mean, people mm. can't, you know, people can't just go and what, you know, if 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 there's a hundred or two hundred or five thousand reviews of a bike, why would you particularly tune in to see our show? Absolutely. You know, um, it's we we want to be a bit special, uh, but we have a YouTube channel where we're going to be putting other, you know, uh, getting people on normal bikes and and mm. playing, you know, normal stuff. So. Yeah. so they're almost they're going to be treated like two different mediums, aren't they? The TV um, and then the social uh, side. The the show is the main thing. We we mm. have a youtube channel as as a support really for mm. the show uh it will show you know some behind the scenes stuff um the 
the presenters can can make little films whenever they like of uh, you know things they might be bikes they might be riding or kit they might have things like that they'll go on there but it's all supporting material for the main show we are we aren't a youtube channel we are a tv series yeah got you got you next one brandon rain wondering if this will make it on prime usa yes it will yep uh carbonator exciting Cheers, pal. Hope you enjoy it when it comes. Motor MA77. Oh, here we go. Why did you pick Teapot 1? If you could spend 24 hours with someone dead or alive, who would it be and why? And also, we know Teapot 1's scariest moment. What's everyone else's? Well, we covered that last one. Yeah. Um, I'll not. You don't need to answer that one. Why me? But if you could spend 24 hours with someone dead or alive, who would I, it be? I'd like to answer that one, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> do i want you to answer that one i i spent a long time choosing presenters uh for this show it wasn't just me going hey who's cheap mm. <laughs> it was it was looking at you know cheap it, it's not as, it's not are as you guys getting paid people think what? <laughs> <laughs> it's not as easy as people think to create a presenting team that works together well um, and I think, you know, if you look at uh, when they uh, had all the top gear changes and they had um, uh, oh, Chris Evans and mm. they had various, and it just didn't really work. And, and obviously they went over to the Matt LeBlanc and, and that took a long time for the chemistry to really kind of start going, yeah. you know, just as you really felt there was a bit of chemistry between the presenters, they, you know, they all went their separate ways anyway. Um, so it, it's not an easy thing, you know, and, um, it's it's a long process of kind of going. Okay, well, who who can we get? Who will be right? Who has, you know, um, who have people kind of heard of? Who do people respect in the market? You know, and you you can go through all these things, and you can go right. Okay, well, here is, you know, we'll get this one famous person who's great. This other person's famous, that's great, and this other person's famous, is great. If they don't work together in chemistry, there's no longevity to the show. The show ends mm. up being a one series thing and people turn off it's it, it it was it was a long process for me to kind of go right i need to find three presenters that are going to work together well and have a great chemistry um i you know one of the things we have is a is a whatsapp chat between everyone um and i remember christy spent a long uh, once kind of going tom you don't talk very much on here and it's, it's because it's not for me it's it's I'm, I'm being a puppet master, <laughs> getting the chemistry flowing between you. You sat there with your head in your hands. Going, oh, yeah, that was more like it. <laughs> <laughs> the disappointment I, seeping through him. <laughs> but you know, we've I've I've put together the team that I think will best have great on-screen chemistry, and. Yeah, we'll just see what whether I did a good job or not, won't we? <laughs> I, I think we're going to have a giggle. I genuinely do. I think it's going to be a scream. What was um, the second question that? Oh, yeah. What was the second question? Uh, what would you spend time with, 24 hours yeah. with one man? If you could spend 24 hours with someone dead or alive, who would it be and why? Steve That's McQueen. Good... Yeah? <laughs> Steve, McQueen that... on, Steve McQueen on a Sunday going bike racing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And I want to ask him about what it was like making The Great Escape. I saw a documentary on Steve McQueen quite re- I think it was on Sky Arts or something. And and that bloke was you know, take take him away from take him away from the actor side. I mean he, he lived and breathed bikes, didn't he? He yeah. absolutely lived and yeah, breathed really racing. Did, yeah. yeah, really focused guy and a good rider. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think that's a good call. Mm-hmm. Mm. What about you, Christy? Right, Tom so Hardy. It, <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying not to say that. I really am. Um, do you know what? It, it depends. It depends what mood I'm in. There's there's many different multiple personalities of, of mine that that would that would predict the outcome of, of this question. And to be honest, depending on what mood, there are quite a few people that I would choose. But you know, for for an intellectual kind of gathering in 24 hours, I'd really like to spend time with David Attenborough. Mm. Like, he Good is, ah, cool. oh, he's well, just a national treasure and the stories that he could tell, like, with, yeah. you know, in a non-biking capacity. That's um, a good call. 
Mm. The other one is Elvis Presley, Ooh. and that's just for the obvious capacity. Uh, and um, uh, in a biking sense, it'd have to be my hero, Valentino Rossi. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Do you 24 think hours of Rossi. Wow. Do you think, do you think Rossi is entertaining away from the bikes? I think he is. Yeah, I, 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 it's, it's, yeah. as a non-biased answer, because obviously there's an element of, of, uh, attraction that goes there as well. So, you know, like I, I'm, I'm answering based on a bit of like, oh, it's Valentino Rossi, but following him on his different, um, his accounts and he does a lot of off-roading and, and, uh, yeah. And racing, car racing as well. I think he'd be, yeah. I think off the track he'd be just as exciting and entertaining as he is on. But also, I think it's more because I do think his career he is still very successful. Yet he is still, it's been up, it has been up and down this past yeah. couple of, you know. So yeah. this past kind of, you know, I can put myself out there now saying it, but uh, but two years three years maybe that he has been in my eyes back on it and i know mm. he, he took a dip for a while with mm. in between different teams and bikes and and obviously the incident with marco simoncelli i think had had a, a massive yeah, yeah, impact yeah. on him and yeah. for him to even come back after that i think is is applaudable in all senses but um yeah yeah i think he'd be just as cool off the track as he is on the old yeah. doctor I think you're yeah. right. And the fact that the guy is still fighting still. almost at the very top level consistently. Yeah. yeah. Even and after all this know, time. And he's bringing his age into it as yeah. well. He's, he's, he's fighting all the youngsters now yeah. as well. And he's still, you know, he's still podium. Yeah. That's he's a like massive achievement. He's 40, 41 now, isn't he? Something like that. I believe, 40, he's, 40, I believe he's 41. And he's still coming in, like, certainly within the top 10, if not top six, top five in mm. most of the races. And you're like, that's phenomenal. Yeah. That's yeah. phenomenal. I mean, and it, I, I just think what 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 stories he has to tell, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, um, I had the absolute, utter privilege of meeting Colin Edwards and spending, like, the evening with him at his ranch, his Texas Tornado Boot Camp ranch. Wow. That bloke, that, that bloke is just... I'm a grown man. You sh as a grown man, you shouldn't have a hero, should you? But I mean, that bloke is just as as a 45 year old bloke. I would have a poster of him up in my. He's just he's just <laughs> awesome. He's just That's such a, a decent geezer. He's he's awesome. He's, <laughs> he's everything you expect or you want your hero to be. That's what that bloke is. Phenomenal, phenomenal. He, he, always, he always comes across when you see him on MotoGP, and he hasn't he hasn't been part of the pundit team for a while. But when he was. Yeah, I mean, as a racer, amazing. Mm. But then, as part of the uh, part, as a pundit, I always thought he was uh, both. Um, <clears throat> yeah, he, he, he could he could he could communicate brilliantly, mm. but also be very down to earth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's got I, that. I, that... I, I, thought, I thought he was a great pundit. Really, really good. And he's he's got that inherent Texas mentality in him that you like you said very down to earth very guttural mm. he, he can relate to normal people and he's just he's not he is normal but the bloke possesses plainly possesses biking talents that are just up in the top one percent aren't they and uh, he was just such a down to earth humble his whole family were but i mean he he's the one that is the moto gp star <laughs> and uh, oh, it was amazing it was amazing to meet him he looks you, like he has the best parties at his ranch. Oh, <laughs> I, when I was there, it was his birthday. And, um, I mean, it was literally a Twitter. It was just a tweet. One of, one of my mates who happened to work for Bridgestone at the time had said, we've got a guy that we're supporting. He's on this trip. He'll be coming through the States. And Colin Edwards just tweeted back and said, yeah, tell him when he, when he gets to Texas, give, give me a shout. So oh when I was God. in Mexico... I sent him a message. I just sent him a DM on Twitter and said, I'm that guy. Um, I'm, I'm heading to California at the moment, but I'll be back in Texas in like two weeks or whatever. And he said, oh yeah, just stop by the ranch. I'll, I'm getting him from Singapore. So I stopped by the ranch and 
the guys were all there and made me feel very, very at home. And then he turned up straight from the airport in his four before, and it was his birthday. So, so he bought himself a big ass truck for his birthday. <laughs> so late on in the evening, when a lot of beer and steaks been consumed everyone piled into the back of this big four before truck and he took it round the enduro truck <laughs> <laughs> he's, jump, he's like jumping this great big four before over the enduro truck and i was like this bloke's just my hero he's awesome <laughs> and, and you slid into his dms <laughs> oh, i was like i want you to be my dad you are the best dad ever <laughs> that's yeah, awesome mega. mega what about you tom um, Neil deGrasse Tyson wow. would probably be my anyone. Wow. Um, biking wise, Travis Pastrama. Ooh, yeah. yeah. Oh, good Ooh, show. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Okay. So, yeah, nice Neil deGrasse that. Tyson. No. Yes. Yeah. You like the deep conversation then, do you? I, I, I like space. Mm. <laughs> what you can't see is like just over there, I've got like a whole load of NASA memorabilia. I'm a massive, massive... I've actually got... An... <coughs> I'm just going to geek out for a second. <laughs> this is this is my... This is a Cosmonauts helmet that I own. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> what, is that genuinely what been up in space? No, this, this one hasn't. There, there's this weird thing. Uh, you can oh, get rid get, of it. Get rid of it. <laughs> you can get these from the old kind of... Uh, the old kind of USSR. Uh, because what they did is they made, as I understand it, they made huge amounts of them for um, their shuttle program, right. uh, which never, the, the Americans beat them to it, so they never went for it. So what they did is they basically got these and they just turned them into uh, pilot helmets. But you can still see, like, inside there, where they cut out the, all the rubber seals for when it was going to be a spacesuit. <laughs> they just cut that bit out of it. Jeez. And then... Um, and then yeah, and they they just end up being high pressure uh, flight helmets. So yeah. oh yeah, I'm a I'm a massive I'm a massive geek. At, at the risk of at the risk of going down a massive rabbit warren at this late stage of the podcast, UFOs. What do you think of UFOs? Oh, what what do I well? I'm a yes, believer. I me, me too. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. I, I don't think that they've... I think UFO sightings are just kind of ex, most of them explainable. I think there probably are extra... Get out. I think that... Get no, out. I think, Check him uh, out. Uh, Check him out now. It is, it is mathematically impossible that there isn't life out there, mm. but the likelihood of it being able to travel the distance to come to us or us being at a point where they even care that we we wouldn't matter to them if they are if they are advanced enough to be able to travel between you know solar systems and things like that then i can't see that you know we'd be like ants to them exactly and we study ants not much. we study bacteria <laughs> <clears throat> this is the thing right like i i listen to a lot i listen to a lot question is Rogan. we don't we don't spend most of our time studying ants via their anus <laughs> and there seemed to be an awful lot of wow. probes when What's it comes to... did something happen to you at school tom is this do you need yeah, to talk you to somebody hear or... about them talking about the anal probes don't you and it's like why oh what? yeah I was, I was wondering where you were going with that then i was really trying to fathom in the in my mind, well, in my mind. Say, oh, yeah, they, you know i was i was probed I was like, Wait, get yourself on. get yourself onto to joe it. rogan's podcast right joe, joe rogan and search for uh, Commander David Fravor, Travis Walton, or Jeremy Corbell. Right, those three guys on Joe Rogan, and just sit and listen to his chats with any of those three. Are we, it, are we just going down a Robert Warren of conspiracy? Mate, honestly, that that <laughs> may well change your world. Listen to those three. <laughs> David Commander David Fravor is a decorated American Air Force captain. And he is in a jet, and he, the American military have backed it all up. They've gone, yep, it's here. He's got actual radar footage and camera footage and everything of crafts that, that he saw and other people saw, and they can't, they can't explain it. These things went from like a foot above sea level to outer space in the blink of an eye, 
and and jammed radar and did all this and they're just like nothing can do that Wait, what is it and they've got it all on camera listen to it and there's another guy there's another guy called Bob Lazar <laughs> he's going for it now go on go oh, Bruce <laughs> honestly the, the Bob Lazar one will freak you out he's uh, like a mad scientist dude that came out in the 80s to say I've been recruited to work at this place next to Area 51 I think they call it Area 54 or something like that and he's basically like I worked on craft don't know what they were but I've never seen them before it's technology I don't know and he's like a, a proper gene like physical physics genius and he's like that their propulsion systems everything we we we, we don't have this which it's just not in existence and I don't understand what any of this is and to this to day fair, when, story, I was, when I was a kid I was published in a UFO I was all into like when X-Files were out and things like that I yeah, was yeah, published yeah. in I was published in a UFO magazine I did. I wrote an article when I was like fifteen, sixteen about um, the B two bomber and oh, yeah, how yeah. it used technology from alien world. Stuff like They're that. watching you, Tom. They're watching you. Oh, I was so cool back then. <laughs> <laughs> how I ever got laid, I've no idea. <laughs> <laughs> we'll end that. There. Right. Let's crack on through these questions because we are just about three hours. Bike throttle. Oh, that's my mate Sean. How you doing, Sean? I'm sure loads of us would like to know how that. Oh, you, you don't need to answer this if you don't want. How the Amazon TV business model works, especially when it's the world's <laughs> richest man behind it all. How do you get on Amazon TV? If someone wanted to do it, how did they do it? Bless you, by the way. Thank you very much. Um, Amazon uh, has uh, various different ways that you can get on it. Um, they, uh, the two main ways are they commission things to be made. Uh, where they pay for it up front, mm -hmm. or you essentially you you make something and you put it up there a bit like you do with YouTube, I guess. Um, but there is an awful lot more in place. You know, you couldn't just grab any YouTube video and stick it up there. You know, you have to have. What are you trying uh, to say about YouTube, Tom? Nothing. <laughs> nothing <laughs> at all. Um, you know, because we were YouTube stable for a long time. But, uh, you know, there, there's stuff that, you know, the average Joe, I guess, would struggle with getting it on, on Amazon Prime because, oh, well, Amazon Video technically is what it is. Um, because you you need to do a whole load of things that you just wouldn't get uh, when you're doing a normal video. You know, for instance, you know, um, YouTube does all the kind of captioning for you automatically. That isn't going to happen with, um, you have to have a paid to have it done professionally. Um, you have to do certain kind of color ranges and color matching. And there's a, there's a whole kind of, I won't go into it because it will just bore you. Give me two seconds. My pizza's arrived. <laughs> <laughs> there's certain things which you just have to stop for. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm just having a, a little quick run through to see how many more Insta questions we've got. We've still got probably another, let's say, six to eight questions still to go on Instagram. Ah. Is everyone okay for time? Because I'm very conscious that this is dragging on. Is I'm everyone good. okay? Yeah. If, 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 if I could read you the messages my daughter is sending me, you, you, you might just die a little bit. <laughs> go on. <laughs> I, so she said to me, you've taken so long, we've drunk all the vodka. <laughs> I love I love your family. I love, yes. great. We've had this WhatsApp group going for quite so a while, I, right so over I, Christmas. I, I said to her, sorry, I'm dry again, as in my glass is dry. She said, my shift finished at 9.30, soz. <laughs> <laughs> and Tom's into a pizza. Oh. <laughs> I don't think I've ever been any more jealous of a man. Um, <laughs> Proper. Yeah. Oh, it looks so good. Yeah, anyway, so, that, that answer about Amazon Prime was surely getting boring anyway, wasn't it, right? It's technical. It's, it's technical. technical so. It's uh, possible. So, yeah. Just go for it. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it just takes a little bit of... I guess anyone can get it up there. The, the, the main thing is, you know, you have to... Another quote for the trailer. <clears throat> <laughs> you, have, you have to you have to find a way of funding it which is the important thing you know mm. it doesn't it's not cheap to make a show of the level that we're doing mm. um so yeah right um 
Who have we got here? Oh, Image for Security. Ah, Dave McGinnity. Great news, Bruce. Congrats. Question for the team. Why, how did you get into biking? What is your favourite story or memory from being on a bike? Look forward to watching. I think we've done that, haven't we? Yeah. Pretty, how we got into biking. Close, yeah. I think we've done it. Uh, Chunky Monkey should be a good one. Cheers, pal. Oh, Christy Axe. Bring those questions on. <laughs> uh, who else we got? Robert Newman, 27. Love the podcast, Bruce. Thanks very much. Makes the long HGV hauls more enjoyable listening to the chat. Question for all. The BMW GS is the best adventure bike, and Bruce says it's the best bike full stop. If you couldn't afford a GS and only a budget of £4,000, what bike would you buy and convert into an adventure bike to get as close to the GS in all its capabilities? Ooh. Well, first of all, I'd like to beg to differ. I don't believe it's the best bike. I think Go it's on. a very, very good bike, but I don't think it's the best bike. Mm -hmm. um, now, I need to quantify this because the GS isn't the best bike overall for road riding. But all in, for me, it's the best <laughs> bike all in. Well, right, over to you. If I had £4,000, I'd buy a Herald Maverick for mm. two and a half grand, and then I'd use the rest of the money to actually go on an adventure. Okay. Okay. Nothing's more annoying than people who buy stupidly expensive GSs and then say, I can't afford to go on an adventure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And there's everything else that goes with it, the carne, the shipping. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Mm. What about you, Christy? I think for four grand, I'd go all in and I'd buy something that I don't think you'd have to do too much for to change it or, you know, have it as a, like an adventure style. And I think I'd just go straight in for KTM 950 Adventure, I think. Mm -hmm. Straight nice. on it. I not have to do yeah, much yeah. to it. It's tall, enduro chassis on it. Yeah. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, that'd be me, I think. Straight in there and have about three pence change. That'd be great for about the first thousand miles, and then it broke down. Then oh, but, you gosh, know, it would you'd not. look good. You would look good. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Graham? KTM, that would never break down. Don't ever say those words. I, you know uh, I, I had a KTM 950 Adventure, and of all of, of the bikes I've had, it's one of the ones I wish I'd never sold. If I could have, if I could have kept bikes and had them in a huge garage, which I yeah. could never afford, I would have kept the one. Um, yeah. Here you are. See, I knew I was right. But you know, a, a bit like Tom, I think it kind of, I, I question the thing about what I want to try and have a bike that's like a GS. Mm. Um, because yeah, we, we, we have a thing on Adventure Bike TV, which is any bikes an Adventure Bike. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I, I, like you said earlier, Bruce, yeah, Sinus 125, fantastic. Mm. Yeah, Mongolia, yeah, Mongol Rally, we yep. did it around Wales on the, on the, on the Tet. Uh, but what, um, so, if, if I was going, and it also depends on the nature nature of the adventure. But if my adventure was nearly all tarmac, then I'd want a different bike to if, mm -hmm. if I was genuinely doing fifty fifty. Yeah. So let me kind of set my own specification. If my if my adventure was going to be um, as much off road as on road, I'd, and I had four grand, I'd probably go something like my old KTM five two five, which I paid a couple of grand for. Um, but then spend a bit on some some modifications to make it a little bit you know, um, easier on, uh, on on some of the sort of maintenance, and then keep the difference to uh, to fund my trip, like Tom said. No, oh yeah, I hadn't even thought about that. Yeah, um, for me, I, I would just if if you want something that's like a GS, as in we'll do everything. For four grand, I'd, just, I'd get a second-hand Vstrom, just a second-hand Vstrom, whether it's the yeah. 650 or 1,000. Yeah. It's, it's a great yeah. bike. It's a great yeah. bike. does ticks everything. It's, 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 not, it's not the best of the big adventure bikes, but it's it's certainly very, very capable. Yeah. And, really and as you said, really underrated. Yeah. Both great bikes. And, and, and as you said, anything's an adventure bike. You know, it's just... If you're going to go down that route, just, just take what, whatever you fancy, because at the end of the day... If you're enjoying riding it, you're more inclined to do whatever comes your way. Whereas yeah. if you're riding a bike that you're not that fussed about, when times get hard and you think, oh, you know, I've got some really shitty track that I need to go down, you're just not going to be that compelled to actually take it on. Whereas if you're on a bike that 
you genuinely enjoy, you'll be like, I don't care what I'm riding over. I'll just, I'll take it on. Let's do it. Yeah. So yeah, don't get caught up into the whole, this is an adventure bike, so I have to take that. You know, just <clears throat> Jacques Lucasin said words to me that, that really struck a chord. Take the bike that makes you smile. And that yep. has yeah. never a truer, never really, a truer expression. Yeah. Um, Right, Gavin Fraser, 39. This is for you all. I know Bruce would be up for this, but would your production bosses do a challenge through Mongolia on any bikes of your choice? Ooh. Tom, can we go to Mongolia, please? Can we? Can we, please? Tom, Tom, Tom. I'm not eating <laughs> testicles. <laughs> Again, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, done that. No. Um, that's it. Um... Sorry, Dunlop. Would, would... Sorry, Dunlop. <laughs> <laughs> oh, damn. Well, you know, it, it all comes down to funding, which by the looks of it, we're about to lose it all. Um, <laughs> uh, it all comes down to funding. Yes, oh, of course, I would love to. I think it would be absolutely amazing. Um, it just comes down to me to fund it. So maybe mm. maybe one day. Maybe one day yeah. I'd love to. I, I Season love two. Yeah, mm. God, yeah. Absolutely. I was gutted I couldn't get I, I really wanted to do Mongolia and I, I just I couldn't do it on my trip. Hod my start oh nine. Stunning, don't they? Sorry to yeah. cap on them, but absolutely yeah, it does stunning. Then. Proper Hard, remote. But stunning. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Excuse me. Hod my start oh nine. Will you be able to do things on what might be considered inappropriate bikes for that task? I a one two five on a track day. Can it be fun? Or will a GSXR go around a motocross track? No. I don't, I don't do... want to give. I don't want to give away yeah. too much of what we're doing. Yeah. Um, we are doing various things. So, for instance, oh, what's that? Has my has anyone else's sound just gone weird? No. Nope. Yeah. Okay. I can. Are hear the aliens coming weird. for you, Tom? <laughs> I don't know. I think they <laughs> might be. <laughs> Q anal probing. I don't know. It's, really, it's like I've got interference. It's really weird. No, no, you can, it's not us. I'm going to have to switch headphones. Give me a sec. Nanu, Nanu. Get your gaming headset on, Tom. Oh, you know, no, the, gaming, uh, the gaming headset that you didn't want to wear. Well, who start. else knows what Nanu Nanu means? I, <laughs> I, I bet Tom and Christy don't. No, seriously. Do you? Don't insult me, I do. It's more Kamindi, isn't it? There we go. <gasps> See? Oh. 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 Wonderful. Good work. Good work. Thank Very you. Cool. Robin Williams, my hero. Oh, awesome. he is. The, be the awesome. best stand up comedian in the world ever. Absolutely. Yeah, agree. Now, for people watching, Tom is now modelling the headset <laughs> which he wouldn't wear at the start of the show. <laughs> it's his gaming headset he looks so serious can you hear Does, us doesn't he? how are you doing tom earth calling tom can you hear us tom no he can't hear us he can't hear excellent. us he's got excellent hello what are we going to say about him hello you can hear him oh, hi hi there tom how are you graham wasn't saying anything derogatory about you in the slightest <laughs> i never would he still can't hear us no he's still that blank expression, expression, expression. Exp expression. You gone all Chinese no, on us. No more beers for me. <laughs> Tom, can you hear us? Tom, no, I can't. Tom, can you hear oh, us? I love him. I might have to cut this bit out. I would. <laughs> can you hear me? You can't hear me. We yeah, can't can hear you. you. Yes. Oh, I can't hear you at all. No, oh. we can hear you. You need to well, change that, that's your. That's great, but I don't know what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's just the I, um, lo I love you too <laughs> still hear me? yeah you're, you're very okay. you're very faint apparently I'm just not going to hear you for the rest of this oh, no, I that's, don't know how to change it that's actually probably better than the, the AirPods one <laughs> okay you think I'd have some technical knowledge don't you that's going to be fun mm -hmm. that trying to um, yeah Mental note, make sure you, you change the settings, whatever we've tweaked Tom's audio <laughs> for. We'll have to redo it now. Hi, Tom. Welcome back. I might have to leave and come back in. Okay. Okay. We, haven't got, much, we haven't got that much longer to go. Probably another 10 minutes, I would say. 
We can. Oh, he's gone. Right. What are we going to say about him? Tom's awesome. He's really good. Um, we need to wind him up. Anything competitive, <laughs> wind him up because it is so funny. It is he is... honestly as competitive as like he, oh. he hints towards the fact that he's quite a competitive character? Oh, he's um, unbelievably competitive, and it's so awesome. easy to teach him about it. Teach us, I mean, teach I mean, us, Graham. Teach I us. I don't know if you've watched any of the, the, the tales from the trails on the on the um, Venture by TV stuff. When we did the the Welsh um, one two five trip, doing the tech on the one two fives, and and Sam and I just it's so easy. It is so and it's hilarious. You know? <laughs> <laughs> is this going to be a lot of fun? Is it going to be oh, fun? <laughs> just teasing. No, I love I love Tom with all my heart. I love him so much. Um, <laughs> And, and, and he knows that, but he hates me as well because because he knows I he knows I know which buttons to push. <laughs> you you are our guru, Graham. I know. I've teach us. learned so much from you. Teach us, <laughs> teach us. <laughs> oh, I've got to admit, Tom in now. Tom is just coming back in. <clears throat> Tom is connecting to audio. Hello. Yay. Hi. Yay. Okay, that's awesome. my answer. Do you remember what I was answering when I left? Um. <laughs> Uh, about uh, the show, about whether we'd be doing weird... well, yeah, different tasks and things. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, in terms of bikes in inappropriate situations, if you ever doubt about whether we're willing to do that, if you watch the most recent series of Adventure Bike TV, which is on Amazon Prime now, um, we did the Trans Euro Trail through Wales. <laughs> on a Honda C125. You know the new version, the C90, the C125? Yeah. Yep. Brand spanking new from Honda. <laughs> and we were going through, it was kind of over the handlebars, water thing, <laughs> crossings and things like that. We have we have no qualms about putting bikes to the test. Awesome. And certainly I'm not going to share with anyone because, again, it's it's better if the presenters don't know. But we we are doing the Motorcycle Olympics where each presenter gets £500 to buy a bike. But I'm not telling them what they're going to be doing with that bike, so they won't know what kind of bike to buy. <laughs> Look I forward to wait. that. Yeah, I know, to yeah. I know. <laughs> You're going to carry on eating my pizza. Um, what have we got here? Oh, yeah. Gavin Fraser 39. Will you take Bruce off-road? Better still, the Tet. Any bike of his choice, if the deal ever will give it to him. Not a GS. Basically, my lot, my lot, have this thing in their head that I just well, I mean, I play up to it that I despise off road. So any opportunity whatsoever to get me off road, they love it. Well, what by all means, come and join us on a filming day with Adventure Bike TV. I'll give it a crack, no problem, no worries. Oh, can I come as well? Can I come? Of course, uh, no yeah, worries. Come. You can go in my place. <laughs> <laughs> Take your place gladly, Bruce. <laughs> All right, uh, I think this is second last one on Instagram. Joe Hints, three bike garage. Has to be three. Go. Ooh, three bikes in your garage. Go. Which ones? Uh, I, I would say my, my current garage with the one I intend to put in there, which is the um, EXE 500 plus the BMW plus the old Farblade. It's nice. For me now, at this moment in time, it's the right mix. That might change next year. Who knows? Mm -hmm. Like it. Like it. What about you, Christy? Uh, three bikes. The 1200 Monster. Mm. Uh, Trident 660. Triumph Trident 660. And the KTM Super Duke. Ooh. Or the... What was it? The... Uh, Duke R, the 890 was there. Yeah. Right. The yeah, you want that? Yeah. What about you, Tom? KTM 950 Enduro. Because that's a beast of a bike. Um, probably the Harley Davidson Livewire, to be honest. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And the Aerial Ace, which I think is the most beautiful bike on the market at the moment. Ooh. Mm. Ooh. Yeah, nice. yeah. Which choices, Tom? I've not heard yeah. that one crop up before. Mm. I, I would have. I change my answers now. I know. I know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I would have the new Gen Three Super Duke R. Hundred percent. That is 
to me for me that's the perfect road bike love it um i think i'd have to have an electric in there and it's either going to be it's either going to be the live wire or the energica rebelli Mm. But they've brought out the is it the GS or the the RS or something? They've brought out basically a souped up version of the one I took out, so it's got to be that. They got like um, the Ego Plus, is yeah, that the one? something like that. Yeah. Well, I mean the the Ego is the Ego is their sports bike version. I, I've ridden, I rode that in it. Oh, listen to me, I rode that in Italy. It's <laughs> it's good, but I prefer the I prefer the Rebelli style. You know the the sort of naked style of bike um so yeah i think i'd have the energy car the super duke car Ooh. and it would either be the triumph rocket three or a fat boy it, it, it would be that style of bike i think the rocket three is more refined and i would love to try that in the dry i rode i rode the harley fat boy in the dry and it was just it was just a chilled out machine but i think the triumph will probably be balls to the wall like the the triumph you can chug along on but i think you could also really properly hustle that so mm. i'll probably have those three at the moment that would be my good my choice mm. yeah. good range yeah good range. Yeah, yeah right last <laughs> last question on instagram martin martin treacher a question for christy how do i get the cap off my carter steam cleaner is it down and left or just left <laughs> <laughs> What's the story? There's obviously a story. Uh, here. Oh, st- oh, stupidly, I treated myself. I treated myself to a steam cleaner, <laughs> and I struggled a little bit with the cap because in the instruction manual it just says unscrew the cap. <laughs> right. So I'm unscrewing the cap, and the cap's not going anywhere. And obviously, I'm going the wrong way there, as you can see. I'm unscrewing the cap. <laughs> Yeah. And it's just not coming off. So I took to Instagram, as you do, to kind of say, what the fudge f- is wrong with <laughs> with my <laughs> with it. And um, I had a lot of backlash about the fact that uh, I wasn't pushing down and lefty Lucy in it as you pushed down. But if you had said it was like, like on a car when you're, you know, the putting the coolant in and uh, it, yeah I would have understood but the fact that it doesn't say that in the manual and it just sounds says like, it sounds like cow pole for kids you have to push it down <laughs> yeah I know yeah it was clearly <laughs> child locked and I struggled <laughs> like <laughs> shit all right that was that was the issue so I eventually did it but like I said nobody warned me though that after you use it and I was really confident with unscrewing it um obviously the excess steam comes out like in a car like if you're you know yeah, changing yeah. The water in it and it, it burnt my hand <laughs> it was a bad so basically thing. we're laughing at your misfortune i'm sorry about that i'm sorry basically, basically martin is basically taking the piss you're a bad person <laughs> martin you're a bad person <laughs> right yeah, um I, cr- to the left. I cross onto facebook and i've just sort of dash through the questions on Facebook and it's basically lots of people saying they can't wait to see the show then we have one question from Jock Stare so this will be the last question from Jock Stare who would you least likely to ride I think what he means is who is your least like to ride pillion with and why so your least favourite pillion now, is that you are we pillion or are they pillion <laughs> That's what I'm thinking. Is it you as Pillion or them as Pillion? Let's go us as Pillion. Who would you least likely to ride Pillion with and them ride the bike? Guy Martin. Because <laughs> he wouldn't got... slow down even yeah. if I was crying. No <laughs> compassion whatsoever for the no. Pillion. Would there? there would be no let off. No. No. <laughs> I, I was going to say Guy Martin as well. I just... Yeah, it would. There, yeah, there'll be, there'll be nothing, no sympathy whatsoever. <laughs> wow. Right. Okay. Christy, I'm try- I'm mad. I'm s- desperately trying to think. Like I said earlier, anyone from the Weinstein Company, for obvious reasons. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, I can't even think. 
Um, Jesus. <laughs> well, I mean, I've committed to it, but I've got to say, I'm not entirely looking forward to doing a pillion of the TT circuit with, with Dom, with Dom Horbertson. But in a way I am, and in a way I'm not. Um, that would terrify me. I had to say, oh, Greg's oh, going, yeah. but you, mate, like, that would terrify me to do that. I've got 100% faith in the bloke. It's just mm. I'm I am a control freak. I like to be in charge. So the thought yeah. of the thought of being pillion with anyone, I don't like the thought of. But um well, I'm looking forward to it. I hope it does happen, but at the same extent I'm like, oh my god, that's gonna be horrific. Genuinely, <laughs> I have no fear of that. Genuinely, I literally it's it's weird. In a car, I um I can't even stand anyone else driving. Mm. But on a bike, for some reason, I'm happy with either riding it or being on the back with I hate it. Being pillion. Pillion. It's, it's, I hate it's, being pillion. I, mm. I love, I love both ways. I gotta be honest. And I'm so <laughs> another one jealous. for the trailer. <laughs> I'm so Sorry. jealous that you're gonna do the lap with Dom that I want to do. <laughs> well, we can make that happen. I'm sure. I'm sure <laughs> we can sort something out. Seriously, can we, I, can we uh, make yeah. sure it happens after we've made the series, please. Sorry. What? Can we make sure it happens after we've filmed? <laughs> you, you've got to do it. When when Christy goes and does the TT section, the, the Isle of Man section, we, you've got to get Dom over and get him to do a, a lap with her on the back. Honestly. Come on. I'm going to be eating Come my on. words. Commit, you know, though, commit on fair, camera. It, commit it's on it's camera. Not the TT, it's not going to be the TT week, so you won't be able to go full pelt anyway. Cause... But you can over the mountain section. The mountain Shh. section... The mountain section, there's no speed limit on the mountain section. I'm there. I'm so there. Their, I'm their, their national speed limit is unrestricted. So once you get out onto the mountain, it's open season. Didn't know that. Mm. Mm. Within, within reason, you can't, you, can't, you can't ride or drive like a complete idiot, but there is no speed limit. So it's, it comes down to what the police determine as dangerous or anything like that. Never dangerous. Never, never. <laughs> never not, on a bike. Never. Not with a TT racer. It will be fine. No, be no, that's, that's that's bog standard. That's daily. That's that's work. There we go. See now, Tom. I will. I will put. I will put you in connection with Dom, and we'll go from there. <laughs> in Tom's face. <laughs> Tom. <laughs> Tom is just seeing litigation. I don't care, insurance. Really. Oh no. <laughs> right that is literally us i think we've actually managed to answer all questions three hours and almost 20 minutes Yay. Oh, yeah. Yay. yes mate you did it. um uh, i i don't know whether you're going to mention that dunlop have um said they'll donate a pair of tires oh wow uh, for one of your viewers Fantastic. Uh, so I don't know how you want to organise that giving of away, but Dunlop have had. I said they're happy to um, chuck a pair of tyres to someone who you deem necessary. <laughs> um, right. I'm watching this. Right. How can we do this? What I will do then is okay. on. Right. I've got to make this work for me, and I've got to make it work for you. So, if you are <laughs> listening to the podcast, listening. To the podcast so if you're watching this on youtube you need to get yourself across to itunes you need to get yourself across to spotify google whatever it is anywhere where the podcast is even go across onto the podcast website which you can listen to at teapot1.com i need you to leave a review so whether that's one star or five stars whatever you think fits leave a review five and stars I will Exactly. Five stars are preferably <laughs> honest, obviously. But I will pick somebody from this podcast, this date range. So within the next week. So this is this will go live. Uh, what date are we at? Twenty second. So this will go live on. Bear with me, people. Sorry. This will go live on Wednesday the twenty seventh. So between Wednesday the twenty seventh and Tuesday. Sorry, Wednesday twenty seventh of January, and Tuesday the second of February. 2021 leave a review and i will pick someone from the reviews who leaves a review and you will get your choice is it your choice of tires from dunlop yeah essentially yeah so you will wow. get a free you'll get a free set of tires off of dunlop thank you very much dunlop most appreciated thank you very much um and again shout about it on any of the socials and let people know so they head there and do it awesome guys before um 
before we call it quits, thank you so much for coming on board. I've really enjoyed it. I can't believe it's been three, almost three and a half hours. That's phenomenal. I know, it's crazy. <laughs> Thank you, thank you very much. Absolute Cheer pleasure. I, I thank cannot... you, my friend. <laughs> Cheers, you. <Ewan>. Thanks very much, you. <laughs> He's back. My love's back. <laughs> it's brilliant, isn't it? <laughs> to be fair, and, uh, it's actually I cannot, quite effective. I can't wait to get cracking with this. I really genuinely can't. <laughs> so thank Me you very either. much, everybody, for the opportunity. I really cannot thank wait to you. get cracking. Thank you. Tom, is there anything you need to shout about, plug, before we go? Um, I would like to say a massive thank you to Dunlop, who are our production partners for the show. Uh, without them, we wouldn't be able to bring the show to you, sure. and we certainly wouldn't be able to bring it to anyone for free like we're being able to do through the Dunlop website. Uh, I'd like to thank Feridax, who uh, confirmed today uh, came on board as um, clothing suppliers for the show, uh, which means that your lovely presenters are going to be able to wear some really cool stuff um showy helmets and spiddy clothing and city boots and um yeah that's all for uh, that's all going to be supplied by Feridax. so thank you very much to them that's 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 it really we're you know just those two guys are how we're making this show but especially dunlop brilliant to have as a production partner i just love the fact if i'm honest i think like many people i grew up seeing racing tracks with the massive Dunlop yeah. fire bridge. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. To have the people that do that supporting um what I genuinely hope, you know, to be the uh, the kind of the show that I think the motorcycle market has needed for a while. Mm -hmm. um, and I hope that this is it. And thank you. you thank you. Yeah. It's going to be I good. Hope you'll never see me again. This is where I disappear. <laughs> now it's all these three. Okay, so if the show goes appallingly, it's these three. <laughs> I will. You clearly want to start off. It'll be brilliant. <laughs> I am going to be doing some filming on on the Teapot Channel behind the scenes. Don't you worry. So you will see Tom. Don't worry about that. Yay! Um, <laughs> Graham, Christy, anything you want to say before we head off? Excuse me. No, just uh, I, I like, like you said. I can't believe it's been three and a half hours. It's just, it's just gone. It's gone past in a flash. I can't wait to get get out there and start filming with you guys, Christy. Same, really. I am just. I just. It. It just can't come quick enough. Honestly, yeah. I. I am. I am just absolutely stoked, and I just think, well, if three and a half hours can go that quick, you know, of us just chops in a way, then uh, sky's the limit. I. I it's going to be awesome. It's going to be mega, isn't it? We have been chipping yeah. at the bit to try and to say something, haven't we? Until we got the go ahead to actually say anything. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. Folks... Good job. None of you were nagging me or anything. <laughs> <laughs> Tom, Tom, do you know what's happening yet? No, Tom, Tom, Tom. It's coming to your screen soon, and as soon as we start filming, I think we're going to start leaking some stuff on social media, aren't we? Some like yeah, behind absolutely. the scenes filming and stuff. So we will be bringing you content before it goes live on on Amazon. So keep following the socials. I'll put links to everybody's socials down below in the podcast notes and in the YouTube notes. Check out the description there. There'll be links everywhere. Make sure you follow everybody. Make sure you interact with us. Let us know what you want to see, what you do like, what you don't like. Once the series starts, let us know what you're liking, what you're not liking. And hopefully we can uh, mould this into something that, that you really enjoy and you invest in. Make sure it's constructive, though. Don't send me death threats. <laughs> yeah, yeah, obviously. Obviously. <laughs> <laughs> that that was crap is no use just give us something give us some feedback all right okay then right folks um if you're still here almost three and a half hours later thank you so much for your uh devotion to the cause it is much appreciated i hope you've enjoyed it what can i say folks we are hopefully nearly through this i think there is some positivity on the horizon there so um keep on doing your thing keep looking after those that you love get on out there and live your life. Woo -ha. Thank you, <laughs> Guys, thank you so much. Really enjoyed okay. that. It's been a giggle. That was awesome. I wasn't yeah. expecting it. I, th I don't think we've lost too many sponsors. <laughs> <laughs>